Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I love you, baby. Good morning. Why? Check, check, check this thing on. Guten Morgen. A one, two, a one, two. First Guy Omaha Radio, First Guy Omaha in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> Can you hear me? All right. Looking good, looking good. All systems go. You know what it is, the fresh edition, First Sky Omaha Radio, First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. Yep, my name is Paul B. We got Buddy to God. It is Paul Wednesday, B. April 10th, 2024. That's right, Paul B. Yeah, man. What's going on, y'all? Good morning, morning, good morning. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> RG in the chat, uh, I guess we taking too long. He says, been an entire minute. We late. <laughs> I guess we late. I think it's been an entire minute since RG been on. Is what I think he's talking about. He said, What's oh, "Okay, good, okay, okay, okay." Hey, welcome. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Good to see your initials in the chat. Kimber Snipes gives us a wave, casual hello, hello. Pops Howdy. says, uh, "Yeah, from, yeah, for Wednesday and Mad Love from Las Vegas." Pops loves him a Wednesday. Man, hump day. <laughs> That's what's going on. Kimber speaking German to us. What's going yeah. on here in the? Look, look, y'all. <laughs> All kinds of shenanigans this morning. <laughs> Guten Morgen. <laughs> Judy Prince gives us a morning, fam. Good morning. Marlon Harris says, good morning, First Sky family. Leah Keister says, what's up Wednesday? Yeah. That's what's what's going on, man? Appreciate y'all coming in so early this morning. Yeah. Uh, shout out to you. And shout out to the 630 crew, uh, who uh, Club 630, over Get there down. on the radio channel. Let us know how the mix was this morning. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, man, it's we're back for another day. Another day. Special guest today, Precious McKesson. Hey. Looking forward to that. Politicking with P today. It's been a while. Oh. Speaking of an entire minute, it's been a little while. She's been globe trotting and doing things. Yeah, it'd be nice to catch up. Nice to catch up. The elector, up. the elector. Yeah, man. Yeah, in this day and age. Uh, and uh, end of Ramadan for you. How you feeling? Man, uh, E. Mubrak. E. Mubrak. Yeah, yeah, it's the beginning of Eid, uh, having a celebration this Friday. Looking forward to that. Uh, breaking bread with, with my fellow Muslims down here. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I made it. It's, uh, <laughs> you alive? Yeah, yeah, I made it. I, I'll be honest, man. Uh, on Sunday, mm-hmm. caught myself getting in the yard, trying to do some things. Went a little, little too, too aggressive. Mm-hmm. Felt myself, you know, about two minutes from passing out, but... The good part, yeah, man. I was getting getting a little woozy, getting a little, a little woozy, woozy in the head. Yeah, yeah. And I was on post at the time, but um, you know, the good part about you know the fast and, and Ramadan is you kind of get as you're detoxing and you know you're you're fasting, so you're not eating, so your body is flushing out whatever is whatever is in there, mm. and you kind of get more in tune with your body. So I, you know, I, I felt like yeah, some some ain't right, man. I'm gonna need to go sit down. I'm gonna need to go sit down. So okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Made good it through. Day. And also, um, you know, with the with the eclipse, which we didn't really we haven't really talked about it. If anybody got out and saw the eclipse, you know, let me know what you did for that. That was quite interesting. Did it did it get dark in Omaha? Is that no, no. Lackluster. Yeah, yeah. It was kinda it was like shady at best out here in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh yeah, yeah. My brother was in uh he lives in Austin. Uh, he got the full full effect. It got dark out there. Uh, as he was in the path, but um, you know, with the with the fast and Ramadan coming to an end and the the solar eclipse, like I'm feeling renewed, refreshed. You know what I mean? New life springing forth, feeling good, feeling good. So yeah, let us know how you feeling out there. Again, if you did anything for the uh, eclipse, did you get outside? Did you go, you know, picnic or yeah? What'd you do? What'd you do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was I was calling folks, thinking we gonna have total darkness around here and all that. Nah. But hey, uh, it was still, it, it did cast a strange effect on yeah. on everything. Yeah, a little yeah. hazy, a little shady, a little bit. Yeah, weird, weird effect. I love, I loved it though. But uh, yeah, let us know what you guys did uh, for uh, the eclipse and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, love to hear about it. RG says 
folks amped up that 72 degrees today. That's why we early. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Woke up like, oh, 72. It's going to be nice. It's going to yeah. be nice. Noise. Amy H. Doc gives us a good morning. Good morning to you. Appreciate you coming in. Wanda Lewis gives us a good morning on Facebook. So thank you for that. That's my indication Facebook is working like it needs to. Yeah. Well, yep, yep. Uh, RG said the sun was shining. Yep. It was a, it was kind of a trip. I did. I looked up once. I tried to pull a Trump on him. I'm going to <laughs> look at it. Yeah. You didn't you see the movie? Don't look up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see that movie. Marla Harrison gives us a Ramadan is a great time to lose weight. My mm. friend told me yesterday he lost 10 pounds during Ramadan. You lose any, any, any weight? Yeah, man. You know, I don't have much weight to be losing, but I, I definitely lost lost some weight, man. But oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm feeling good, though. I'm, I'm feeling good. And, you know, looking forward to, um, you know, gaining it back, new gains, getting, getting my summer body ready. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hot boy <laughs> summer coming. Yeah, man. Hot boy summer. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> well, Mark oh, Mark Miller in the chest at that time of the year where I have to bring shorts to work to change into as they don't work on the morning ride but needed for those evening rides. Okay, yeah, a little cool yeah, in the morning, yeah. warming up in the afternoon. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, take be it. safe out there on the bike lane, brother. Yep, yep. Michelle Moreno gives us a good morning. Appreciate you. Thanks for everybody coming in early with the good mornings. Feels good on a Wednesday. Yeah, uh, okay. fresh edition. yeah, man. Hump Day and, and uh, Pre- uh, Pre- Precious McKesson. I'm lo- really looking forward to politicking with P. Uh, she'll be here uh, during the, the during about the midpoint of the show. So appreciate everybody coming through. Heather Williams gives us a good morning as well from Facebook. Appreciate you. Uh, Rose Review says no eclipse. Best I can do is two apocalypse now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Good one. Yeah, I, I I did get outside, man. I did a little meditation outside, uh, meditated inside, and then caught myself falling asleep. Well, let, let me get up. <laughs> let me actually get outside, man. Um, go sit in the street so I can make sure I don't fall asleep. A little bit. It, it was a little eerie though, because I went outside and it was not completely dark, but like shadowy. And the, but the birds was chirping. Like the, the I'm hearing a lot of people saying the birds like were doing some some things. Like they all, were all in the trees, all chirping, all very very active. Uh, but it was kind of a little darker. It was, it was a that was a little eerie. Like it was very calm too, though. Like very calm outside. I saw, I read an article uh, that that <laughs> I, I have to fact check this, but they said that that uh, Nat Turner back in the day uh, uh, started the revolution on the solar eclipse. He thought it was a sign and and decided to do the uprising right then. Yeah, I did hear. That. I hadn't heard that as well. Yeah, gonna have to look into that. Fact check that. I don't know. We're gonna have to look into a few things on a fresh edition of First Guy Omaha in the morning. Definitely has some things morning. to talk about. Stepping on the line. First guy, Omaha, in the morning. In the morning. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Paul B, buddy to God, all of you, Chad Chimers, Ghost Listeners, radio listeners. Lots to talk about coming up. And special guest, Precious McKesson, is all yeah. going down right now. First guy, Omaha, in the morning. Let's make it happen. Don't touch nothing. What up, what up, what up? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Once again, First Guy Omaha Radio, First Guy Omaha in the morning. In the DS. <laughs> Appreciate you coming on in this Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. We're moving right along through the year. Springtime hey, feeling. It's supposed to be nice today. And uh, we got some good things to talk about. Last last week of the, of the legislation. So that's that's important. Uh, figuring out what's what's been happening in the last days here. We'll be talking a little bit about that stuff, and then mm-hmm. Precious McKesson will be politic with P. Mama God in the house seems seems pretty excited about it. Precious is on today. She said, "Yes, yes, oh, indeed." Yep, yep. Good morning Good to morning, you, Mama God. Yep. Yeah. Also, Brother Pena's in the house. He said, "I did fast and eat, and I eat less." Yeah, I always eat less after I do a fast too for a little while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> taco <laughs> Tuesday come around and. Mm-hmm. Get you, you know every, time. every time. Yeah, I would definitely yeah. say uh, my my diet is changing too as a result of this fast. Man, try to make me like some uh, chicken stir fry last night. 
Wasn't happening. I didn't, huh? I, yeah, I, I didn't. I mean, I, it, it still still went down, but I, I wasn't too crazy about the smell of the chicken. I was like, hmm, that's man. That happens to me all the time, bro. It's different. Yeah. Uh, I go I go vegan about three or four months out of the year because I I come around and all of a sudden I'm just like I, I can't even smell meat can't yeah, even smell it's, it it's not the same it's not the same also um uh so a few of my my you know Muslim brothers was kind of breaking down oh uh, you know just the the fast of Ramadan is actually kind of a um it's a precursor or like a, a glimpse of, of the year actually uh, and um like. Mm. Uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be make, uh, peace be upon him. Um, is uh, his his diet was like Monday through Thursday. So like mm. that's actually throughout the year fasting the same. You know, sun up to sun down, Monday through Thursday is actually uh, a, also a diet that's you know kind of suggested. It's not you know as compulsory or you know um, as strict as Ramadan, but you know. Yeah. If anybody is interested in continuing the practice, if you feel like that, you know, you, you uh, observed Ramadan and that did some good for you, there you go. That would be a tough one. Monday the Thursday. It would. It would. But it's, it's I'd about this one. I'd eat myself into a coma over the weekend. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> By Sunday, I'd be like, oh, God. Man, well, you yeah. know, don't be a glutton, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, just, that's, the, that's, the, that's the whole key. Uh, yeah, man. Moderation. Moderation. Maggie Miller Jenkins, uh, Maggie Miller Jenkins in the house. Good morning. She says Wayne voted in favor of removing Nebraska's right to vote on public dollars for public schools, along with thirty other senators. Don't yes, yep, that, that, okay. that happened. Yeah, yep. we'll get into uh, that. Also, Rums Review says uh, there should have been a grandfather clause for those older neighborhood East Omaha with nothing but on street pa- parking. Uh, when East Omaha was built, people only had one car. Uh, yeah, law just passed that you cannot park on the grass now. Man, yeah, yeah, and if you do, you're gonna be giving up a little coin. Yeah, so there, there's a, there's definitely some things we got to wrap up, and I can't wait to speak to the senators on Monday, the wrap up of uh, the legislative session this time around. That is, if there's not a special session, which that part, which uh, Senator Jerome McKinney said there probably, there probably will be. Uh, but before we get into all that, just want to kind of uh, just chill out with you guys a little bit. Let us know uh, how you guys are doing, what's, what you're feeling like this midweek. I uh, appreciate everybody that's putting stuff in Friends of First Sky Omaha. Um, anything else like in the news on your mind? I mean, there's there's so much stuff going on. I guess I guess they banned abortion in Arizona all the way. They mm. went back to an 1893 law. Okay. Uh, so I, there's a lot of people talking about that stuff going on around town. Um, you know, I'm think. Oh, I I heard a, a report this morning that the medium house uh, purchase price now is one million dollars. I'm seeing that. And it's I'm not, just, not just LA and New York. This is all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like 300 cities. Here, here's one of them. Um, Million dollars. There's yeah, yeah. Else to buy a house now. Actually, we um, early on a couple years ago when we first got here, we were looking at purchasing a house, and we went through a program like a you know assistance program, and we actually got approved for like four hundred thousand. Uh, for a house and you think like oh man okay yeah we can do something with that man we want to go looking like that's not enough space that's man we're gonna be on top of each other man yeah yeah it's, i'm hearing it's cheaper to, to rent like i'm i'll be honest i'm kind of comfortable where i'm at right now <laughs> this situation is working out that's why everybody's written bro that's man why, you know what i'm saying anthony rogers writing the check good morning he says there's still a genocide happening in gaza being being funded by our tax dollars and genocide and genocide joe biden Mm, there's that um man it's not uh, going away it's still yeah. in the news. speaking of the ramadan and, and the the eclipse and things has anybody been paying attention was does anybody know about the red heifer situation and the cows did they sacrifice the cow yet mm. mm-hmm. yeah if anybody yeah. knows about that uh angel in starks new name in the hey, chat Facebook. angel starks how you doing okay. appreciate you coming on this this is not quite here for that median price yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's nationwide. So they're 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 uh, they're they're looking at the whole nation, and that's the median price. So, you know, so if it's two hundred thousand here, and it's two million in New York, <laughs> that's ridiculous, yeah. man. That's that's utterly ridiculous. We don't have an article on that, but we might need to spend some time to talk about that and try to get an understanding at some point. I know we've talked about some of the you know multinational and mega corporations that are you know buying up properties left and right that you know have something to do with it, but. I mean, the house I grew up in, my parents got that for like thirty, thirty-six thousand dollars. I just man, how 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 have times changed? 
I mean, not even you talking about back in the day. Like when I got in town in 2010, there was houses around my um, my great uncle's house that they were going for fifty, sixty thousand. The one I was in was going for sixty thousand. Man. So and now those are two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar homes. And, the, and like you said, one one two bedroom on top of each other type of stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It is definitely something we we that we got. Uh, you know, it's it's one it's, it's space is the place, man. We had a whole season on this. You know, where is our space? Where is our place? Uh, people are, are are hitting our neighborhoods up and trying to buy up homes. Uh, co- corporations from other places. There's a corporation out of uh, uh, K- uh, Kansas that has pretty much bought up the, the the surrounding area from where my family house was, my family's hmm. house was, and where, you know where my mom grew up and everything. They're constantly hitting everybody up around there. My sister and everybody up around there. Sell your house. Sell your house. You know, and they they bought up a lot and they're renting them out to people. And uh, and that's that's it's a big problem, man. Where 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 do you belong? Where's your space in in North Omaha? If you're from North Omaha, or you just live in North Omaha or East Omaha, where is your where where can you live, man? Where man. is the space? And then even when you when you get property, you know, as we've seen with with certain projects and things, you still still could be at jeopardy of losing it. So, yeah, what do you do? What do you do? Right. Uh, and Marion Williams also kind of reading my mind. Uh, she says cars are more expensive than homes used to be as yeah. well. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, up. It's, it's up. Pops, pops in the chat said, love me some little Debbie honey buns. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know the context there, but. Uh, well, uh, he, he says, says that at uh, RG because uh, RG is kind of uh, agreeing with you. He says, I couldn't do it. Talking about Ramadan. Oh. He says, uh, kind of like BZ said, I, I'll end up smashing a box of little Debbie honey buns over the weekend. Just <laughs> miss that. cookie monster style. <laughs> I missed that. Of course, it might work because by Monday, I'd be like, yes, I'm ready to fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too many honey buns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kimber Snipes says, I went to, I went off during our leadership team at Sona about the this parking ordinance. It's absolutely ridiculous. Mm. It's, it, it's, it's people from, you know, uh, people from other sides of town that think they need to have a say in the sides of town that do things like park on the grass. It's kind of, it's, it's a trip. It's a trip what's going on. Yeah. Uh, also, Angel and Stark says property prices have definitely appreciated. Brother Pena says I need help, but it's hard to find proper help. Uh, most small businesses struggle finding help. You ain't lying, man. Most we we struggle trying to pay for help, not find help. Find the funds, find the funds for help, and 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 also, <laughs> by the, when we figure out the funds, then yes, then it becomes hard to find the help even after that. So it's yeah. it's, it's kind of a trip. What's going on here? Right. Actually, um, speaking of that, uh, Empowerment Network has a job opening. We'll be talking about they that. They do. They do. We'll do. Yeah, man. Uh, and it's an interesting one, too. It's an interesting one. I, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, I'd love to have the brother on to talk about it uh, because I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to solve a couple things. I mean, we can mention it now. It's a, it's a job. Uh, the Empowerment Network has put out that they're hiring a, for a person that is going to be kind of uh, connecting with the community on certain issues. Might as well go ahead and want to read that. Let me pull that up real quick and see. Oh yeah, you want to dive I'm into it real quick? Yeah, let's dive into it because because I, I I think it's it's really something that uh, I would like to put out there to the chat. We have a we have a particular uh, group of chat chimers that really 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 are skeptical about the empowerment network and all and what's going on there. They always are, are the forefront of bringing a lot of money into the community and they feel like they're gatekeepers sometimes and so on and so forth. But there's always opportunities there like this one. There's a job that is, is supposed to be. Uh, See if I can just read the uh, job description of it. it. It's already up. It's already on Indeed.com. And uh, I think it's pretty interesting. Let me see what the job description is. Uh, seeking passionate and dedicated individuals to join our team as an MBK uh, program manager. This position pay- plays a crucial role in leading in the development and implementation of programs targeting boys and young men of color with a particular focus on enhancing collaboration within the community. The ideal candidate will be will have a deep understanding of the challenges faced by black, Latino, and indigenous populations and will work tirelessly to create meaningful and impactful initiatives that empower and uplift these communities. So they'll be working directly with young boys. They'll be working working with uh, other organizations. This is an opportunity for somebody who is who, who takes this job to connect right with the Black Agenda Alliance and Untamed and all the other grassroots organizations that are working directly with kids mm-hmm. and it's it's a real it's a whole job oh, yeah, benefits and all. right 
So, you know, to me, it's like uh, anybody, anybody that's skeptical could be in that situation, you know, get that job, get paid and also, uh, you know, steer it in the direction it needs to go. If it's, if it's in the wrong direction, like, like it's, it's, it's all supposed to be a collaborative. So, mm-hmm. you know, I just thought it was interesting that that, you know, they, they post jobs all the time, but this one struck me because it, it's a, it's, it's something that we have been talking about. <clears throat> we have been questioning and talking about and uh, having brother Willie Barney on to talk about as well. Like, how come you guys are in collaborating with people like the BAA, you know, and, and, the, and this is to me like a, a, a response kind of to that, like we'll cre- create a whole position that will plug us in with everybody. Man. So actually uh, speaking of that, Anthony Rogers, Rice Says just give that money to Kasim. He's doing that work right now. Word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With that, with that. So, uh, yeah. Appreciate everybody's uh, uh, input this morning already, man. It's already a lively conversation. I was trying yeah. to go on a bunch of different directions, just stuff that was on our mind uh, recently. But uh, yeah, let's let's go over the stuff that we're going to talk about today. Uh, we and uh, before our special guest comes in, by the way, uh, Precious McKesson, the Elector, will be on today. So stay man. tuned for her history making uh, P. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Good to talk to her. Yeah, always looking forward to catching up with her. It's been actually a little while. And also, big shout out to all of you who are here with us right now in the chat. Uh, chat's already going off, so I'm definitely excited about today. See what you all have to say about these things. Let your mind be free. Let your voice be heard. As Paul mentioned, seven several things uh, to get into. Uh, still kind of rounding back uh, to a few stories that we ended off in our lightning round on Monday, uh, but want to have a little more extended conversation uh, just a, a few days away from the tax deadline. April 15th is a deadline to fire taxes. So if you haven't done so already, there's some things that you might want to look into, especially if you're trying to save some coin. Uh, the IRS has a new direct file system uh, that some people are actually bucking up against. And Nebraska, actually one of the states uh, that sent in a letter saying that this needs to stop now and uh, could actually take some money from Nebraska's coffers. So, again, looking at what's going on with this tax situation. Uh, also, speaking of the taxes, uh, in the waning hours of our legislative sessions, Governor Pillen, Ellen Pillen, as we like to call them, is still pushing for changes in the property tax. Again, trying to change property tax relief. And uh, I got I got a little theory uh, again about why he's pushing this, but uh, we'll, we'll dive into that a little later on. Again, looking at what is happening and how they're going about uh, relieving property taxes. It might be even even a special session uh, if they don't figure something out. So again, we'll definitely keep our eyes on that. Uh, also, speaking of the session, some big, big things, some big changes coming out. We spoke to Senator McKinney on Monday and he reminded us or kind of tipped us off that he will be pushing a bill uh, to keep OHA accountable. And uh, shout out to Marianne Williams, who's uh, keeping us on up to date with some of the things happening with that. Apparently, there's a senator out of West Nebraska uh, that could be uh, blocking some of that stuff. So, again, we'll definitely dive into what's going on with OHA. Again, Omaha's housing authority, uh, one of the biggest land owners, the controller of uh, public housing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an issue. It's an issue. So we'll definitely look into that. Also, uh, from public housing to public school. Uh, again, there's the whole school voucher situation. And it's uh, actually been pretty contentious, uh, controversial, if you will. Again, the bill did pass last year. There was a version of the school choice bill that passed last year. There was a whole petition that came back and blocked it or stopped it. And then it was set to go to the uh, the ballot Uh, in November this year. But now uh, there's a bill that's being pushed that could stop that. So again, a lot of back and forth on the school choice bill. And some chat chimers already chiming up uh, again, uh, talking about uh, Wayne uh, and his vote and and his leanings on this situation. And again, it's a, it's a very interesting kind of dynamic, uh, very nuanced, uh, our favorite word here on the show. I would definitely like to dive into that. Uh, So we'll talk about that coming up. Uh, Also, again, as we will have Precious on, uh, this is a story we kind of alluded to last episode, but want to dive into deeper looking at the GOP, the grand old party. And uh, they're looking at immigration fears to push voting restrictions uh, and and, uh, how that's being identified as one of the top issues uh, for the Republican Party and where certain individuals might fall on that issue. Uh, Again, very, very interesting where uh, certain people are voting, where certain political leanings are going and certain communities and demographics. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to talk about it. Talk about black folk voting Republican. Is it a thing? Is it a thing? So, again, all those things and more uh, to talk about, as always, if there's something on your hearts and minds that we're not getting into, feel free to drop that into the chat. As I said, let your mind be free. Let your voice be heard. In the meantime, between time, Paul B. Yo, yo. What's the word, man? 
Man, we left it open a little bit uh, ago to just say, yeah, what's on your mind? What's on your radar? Uh, the chat is definitely going off on this. Yeah, big Rose time. Review says, uh, this issue isn't with the cost of things. It's for wages that don't compete with buying power. Mm. For real. Okay. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, also, uh, Kimra says, no one wants to have a conversation about how there are 2.5 cars per each home in South Omaha on average. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, well, you know, if you and then of course you know North and South Omaha have all these very small streets. Uh, the, the you know those areas were built before people had multiple cars. Uh, you know, not a lot of parking around, so that's gonna that's only gonna affect North and South Omaha. This this parking on the grass ordinance for real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she says, Kimber Snipes says, I am on, on one of the few people on my street who has a driveway. Yeah. Yep. Actually, um, remember, uh, <clears throat> Go ahead. mother-in-law worked for the uh, the um, trash company. She was a trash driver, and she would always complain about how hard it was to get through certain streets because yeah. of how, how narrow they were and, you know, just the, the parking situation in, in certain areas. And it was mostly North North Omaha. Yeah, parking on both sides of the street make it, mm-hmm. makes it tough. Uh, Manji Miller Jenkins says still no word on Pillin on the 17 year old found dead on his farm. Mm. Uh, also, Kimmer says, and where where is the city's DEI person to talk about the impact of the fine cost of communities of color? <laughs> Interesting. Mm. Sean, Mc- mm-hmm. Sean McCarthy in the chat. Good morning. Says uh, the 2022 census stated the average medium household income was 74,000 in 2022, which I'm not a math major, but I don't think is enough to buy a million dollar home. Not and right. uh, that's at the medium at seventy four thousand. We know that, uh, that a lot of people, most people, make way under that. Yeah, man. Uh, also, RG is uh, talking to Kimber. Says there's a food truck I'd like to hit up in South Omaha from time to time. And yeah, the streets will be deep all the times with parked cars. Can't even yeah, get to my tacos. It's a tragedy. <laughs> tragedy. Talking tacos. Mama guy got another job opening here. Says uh, Kim eight of these part time canvassers at twenty four dollars an hour. I believe that's Kimber. Mm-hmm. Oh, Kimra. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I was like, who, who, who's Kim Ada, and who's and what's she running for? Kimra's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, clarifying. MBK means my brother's keeper. A segment of uh, Obama Foundation, right on. Oh yeah, okay. I was trying to figure out what MBK stood for MBK, for that, uh, yeah. the job opening. Mm-hmm. Anthony Rogers Rice says, just, "Yeah, just give that money to Kasim. <laughs> He's doing all the work right now for real." Big time. Mar- Marlon Harrison is saying, "So does the parking ordinance mean that we can't party down at Carter Lake?" Good question. Hmm. When, when I go down there, there's so many cars parked on the grass. I think this hmm. is they're talking about like property property stuff. Yeah, uh, is, is what I'm thinking they're talking about here. But you you know you never know where it's good to question where this applies for sure. Um. Also, uh, Maggie Mill Jenkins says also want to tie in that that Schuler in Nebraska is losing 48 percent of their staff for next school year. Uh, yet 30 senators, including Wayne, voted to not fund rural schools. I didn't hear about this not funding rural schools thing. We we'll have, have to look into that. Uh, Kimber Snipes says uh, the Obama Foundation chose Omaha, Newark, and Yonkers, Tulsa to work in. I think it might be a good opportunity uh, to also increase your personal network. Hmm. Yeah, I think Empowerment Network was part of the reason why Obama was uh, was here choosing Omaha as well. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's that's interesting that they, I, I didn't know. I thought it was all over. So I, that's news to me that it was just in certain cities, uh, a few cities. So interesting. Brother Pena says, leave it to the first house, power to the people. I heard that. Mama God says, it's been a while since we had Precious McKesson as a duet due to her uh, busy schedule. As a duet. Uh, please share share right now so others can join us this morning and benefit from her precious, from our precious time with her. You hey, know what? Okay. See what Thank, you did you for, Thank you for reminding us. Yes, please do us a favor. Share the show uh, right now on your page. As we go, uh, just to draw as many people in on the conversations we can, and yes, to be able to hear from the elector is always a privilege. So appreciate yeah, tell that. Tell a friend and tell a friend. Yep, yep. Uh, also, uh, Rose Review says seems like a H- homeowners H H O A association uh, with the new parking ordinance in the city. What else is the city going to restrict? Hmm. It does sound very uh, homeowners association of them to do that. Especially, yeah. especially when people are from other sides of town that don't have the the parking issue are voting on it. Man, let's let's go ahead and dive into that article, man. A lot of people are seeing y'all. Y'all, I see y'all chiming up about that real heavy, uh, and the chat's going off already. So, <laughs> uh, before we let this whole thing get away from us, let's go ahead and dive into that uh, because yeah, a lot of y'all are very very interested in this. It did just come down earlier this week uh, on a very close vote, though. This out of the Omaha World Herald. 
Uh, again, the city council voted four to three on Tuesday to approve an ordinance on how the city enforces a longstanding requirement that vehicles be parked on a hard surface driveway or paved pad outside of residences, uh, as opposed to, of course, on the grass. Uh, Omaha police will be authorized to issue citations to owners or drivers of illegally parked vehicles. Uh, people convicted of violating the ordinance will face a fine of 50, 50 smackaroos. Uh, the ordinance will take effect August 1st. So you still got some months to, you know, set a paving situation or figure something out. If that's you, uh, Mayor Gene Stoughter does not veto it, of course, uh, uh, pinning that. And the ordinance applies to operable vehicles defined as those displaying valid license plates, including motorcycles. So, again, if the car moves, if you can park it. Yeah, you might not want to park it on the grass. Uh, parking in yards off pavement is already prohibited under Omaha zoning codes and enforced by city code inspectors. But again, this ordinance allows police to issue citations and not just uh, relying on city code inspectors uh, who, as we've seen with the whole OHA situation, a mayor might not do something. Uh, I'll just leave that there. Uh, Council member Ron Hub proposed that the ordinance be beefed up and actually sped up uh, an enforcement in an effort to clean up a problem from Omaha neighborhoods. A uh, hug and council members Pete Festerson, Don Rowe, and Danny Begley all voted yes, uh, while Amy Melton, uh, Sister Juanita Johnson, and Brinker Harding voted no on the situation. And, and the improvement uh, came with several amendments. Uh, the fine amount was actually reduced to $50 down from the original uh, proposal, which had a fine of $500. So that's good news as far as the fine not being as heavy. Uh, but the amendment also Includes expectations for vehicles with handicapped parking tags, vehicles parked on yards during certain holidays, and temporary parking of vehicles for loading or unloading and for residents with gravel driveways. So, again, if it's like a 4th of July, you're having an event at your home, uh, I think there will be a uh, an exception for that. Uh, again, for those who, who, you know, you got family members. I know Mama God, uh, we have a neighbor who uh, they have events all the time. People park on, on a grass lot that they have. That's OK if it's on a holiday or, or if the car has a handicap tag. Otherwise, you get hit with that fifty dollar fine. So uh, there you go on that situation. And it seems like a lot of people are not happy about this. Yeah, most def. Um, uh, Wanda Lewis is bringing out a good point. Says South Omaha also has multiple people in single households cost sharing. So, uh, you know, that we just talked about housing and how the medium price for a house now is a million dollars. A lot of people are teaming up, living with each other, staying with family, and each have individual jobs, individual cars. So that that's going to be heavy for them, uh, for people that are multiple, you know, multiple people with cars living in a house. Uh, it was just just definitely going to be tough. On the other side, Mark Manor is saying, "I see elderly people with children and children alone walking in streets, avoiding these cars parked over sidewalks. So it does it does uh, clutter up the sidewalk. It does." Uh, it does cause problems, um, but nobody's going to come in and widen these streets and, and provide parking mm-hmm. lots for homes and so on. Um, you know, just this just the nature of what's going on in uh, in our neighborhoods with with uh, the older neighborhoods. Um, so, yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, thanks for everybody who's uh, replying to this and talking about this situation here. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any more. Yeah, Kimra has some interesting comments. Uh, she says, yeah, yet again, ahead. some of our Democratic uh, representatives not aligning with values, uh, and we keep giving them passes, I, I guess, because they are Democrats, question uh, mark, saying, uh, talking about Festerson, uh, saying, so Festerson voted yes, can't wait till he runs. Interesting. <laughs> interesting, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, it's it's one of them strange things. I mean, you you know, um, well, the the thing that stands out to me is like people that don't live in these neighborhoods voting on this. That's the that's the one thing that, that kind of mm. sets me off about it a little bit. They don't have to deal with it, so they don't have to deal with the actual situation there. They, it's like uh, not understanding what's actually happening in those neighborhoods and why things are like they are. Sometimes you have a choice. Right, right. Um, I, I'm I'm kind of wondering who. Who kicked up the dust? Like who complained about this thing? Like what what led what conversation led this to becoming you know an ordinance and, and falling on um, council council members' radar as far as you know this being an issue? Uh, what what was kind of the complaint or you know tip? Yeah, uh, Rose Review says I understand if a neighbor complains to the cops, but to have the cops have free will to write tickets is overstepping. Yeah, more mm. more reasons for the cops to be in our neighborhoods. Man, man. 
Come in that the court door with a, with a ticket. Yeah, man. Yeah. Black Dynamite gives us a good morning, y'all. Appreciate you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I also uh, mentioned in the article, I forgot to, to say, uh, if you are hit with that ticket, uh, there is also a $50 court fee uh, that will come with that as well. So it's really, really kind of a hundred dollars, you know, kind of think. About and it. and taking the time out of your day, you gotta go to court over it. it it's just I'm I'm so tired of the of the bureaucracy and the hassle of everything mm. all the time, man. Red tape. Yeah. It's just it's ridiculous. There's always something. There's always got to be something. It's always got to be something. This <laughs> it it it, it's, it doesn't look pretty to have your, your car up on the grass. It's it's tough to go down some of the streets. So we got to make a we got to make a whole thing of it. We got to spend time with legislature talking about it. Got to vote on things. We got to implement the police department now. We got to do a whole bunch of stuff over over where you parked your car. It's just ridiculous, man. Amy H. Dot says I don't care about the grass. I do care about accessibility. Are they trying to copy some other larger cities? I wonder. Hmm. Don't know, but I mean, you know, it's. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, like, I, why waste the time? I, I just don't like. I can't get past that part. Like, why waste the time? Yeah, and, and again, it, it this doesn't necessarily uh, include like the broken down cars that might be in somebody's yard if you're working on a car and it's in the yard. That's different. It, it, this is strictly talking about cars that have up to date tags are operable, um, and, and you know are moving. Uh, and, and I do wonder because there are some like in, in leases for people who are renting. We're talking about home ownership for people who are renting. A lot of times leases, you know, require certain cars, like don't allow a, a bunch of cars on the properties and things like that. I wonder if they'll start uh, leaning on property owners. And, you know, if that be will become an issue uh, as well, as far as, you know, making this whole car thing a problem. I, I wonder how far this will go. Good question. Appreciate everybody that's jumping in, jumping in. I see uh, Black Zam 09, and that is at people's houses. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the crib. Yeah. Marianne Williams says, I, I mean, grass is the most worthless thing we spend money on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. I felt pretty good after I cut my grass. Like, yeah. Looks I, nice. felt, I felt good after I helped a friend dig up their grass and plant gardens in their front yard in California. Okay. Just saying. But uh, I've also been one of them dudes in poor neighborhoods with my car on the grass. Like, didn't have anywhere else to park. So, and, and that's not even here. And I can't imagine having to be in a situation in in uh, North Omaha, North and South Omaha, where all these streets and alleys are super small. Mm -hmm. They were not made for, for, for parking a bunch of cars. Some of them don't even have driveways. Yep. It's crazy. Kimber says, I emailed Pete Festerson about my feelings about the city council approving uh, approving a raise for Chief Schmatter. Never got a response. Mm, okay. Okay. Is, is Festerson your council person? Kind of uh, curious. Yeah. He's chair. Uh, he says, I'll have to email Amy and Juanita and tell them thank you. I forgot who. Oh, okay. You guys are. Are you guys talking to each other? thought for sure the Republicans were going to be the yes vote. No, she, oh, she's talking about this issue. Talking about this issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah interesting interesting stuff um uh like i said to me i always go back i keep going back to this part where it's just like why are we even why are we wasting time on this why did they waste time on this now we got the police in the, now there's another reason for the police to be in here messing with us on, on why we at home on, on that part mama guys reading my thoughts uh she says police don't have to park incognito to make quota now on speeding tickets all they have to do is roll around north omaha and get some revenue with new ordinance there you go. Definitely going to find some people slipping. Uh, again, this goes into effect August 1st. So, yeah. Let's move on because I'm getting mad now. About no, okay, okay. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> that's, that's real. The biggest thing for me is that part. They, they will put it in the, in the hands of the police. This is like mm -hmm. another thing that police don't need to be doing. And, again, that's the biggest change. That is the biggest change with this ordinance. It's already, you know, outlawed, for, you know, per se, in, in Omaha. There's already... Uh, fines that can be handed out but it's city inspectors that would have to hand out the fines uh but now they give free reign to the police and yeah i see okay i'm i'm actually surprised at the outrage about this i'll be honest but what? What? really yeah 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 i'm just you know i wasn't sure how you know the chat chimers will feel about this issue but uh, it seems like the people are, are speaking out 
Uh, Marlon <laughs> Harrison is Omaha broke. Why does the city keep creating ticket ordinances? Hmm, they got a good do, question. Yeah, it's a good question. They ain't making enough money off the taxes they raising, so I guess they need some, need more money. Yeah, you know yeah. we got police helicopters to buy and stuff around here. So tanks. Yeah. Uh, Kimber says I think it's an outrage because it's just one more thing on top of everything else. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. Okay. It's not. It's not even the thing so much. It's like why it's like another nitpicky thing that poor people in North and South Omaha now have to deal with. Another reason for cops to be in your neighborhood. And it's just something necessary. How many bigger problems are there that they need to be arguing and talking about and fixing? Man, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the acts about OHA and you know, the mayor, mayor's daughter's like, uh, I can't do nothing about it. Uh but I can keep your cars off the houses, you, off the lawns on the houses you own. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, selective outrage, if you will, on the city's behalf. But uh, okay, okay. Well, we can. <laughs> Buddy is genuinely surprised. Yeah, I am. I am. I, I just didn't, you know, wasn't sure that, you know, sometimes we look at stories like, oh, yeah, this is going to go off. That. That wasn't one of them. That wasn't one of them. When I was, I mean, we didn't even really pull it. I only pulled it because people started chiming up about it in the chat. We weren't going to talk about that today. Yeah. Kimber, Kimber's is feeling like I'm feeling too, not to mention it's super blatant. And we have very few representatives who have our backs, it feels like. Yeah. Well, the North Omaha representative voted no. So she did her job. Amy H. Dodd said, <laughs> got to pay for the streetcar and police gear and whatever other pet projects, I guess. Definite overreach. Mm. All right. All right, you go. moving, moving you on. Go. Moving yeah, on. yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let's well, let's let's pivot though. Move from from that to property taxes again. Talking about again where where the money going and uh, people trying to shift the money around and things like that. And uh, definitely as, as we get ready for pressures to come in, uh, looking at what's going on on the state level. Again, this was a city ordinance, uh, but on the state level, there's some changes uh, happening. And Governor Pillen is opting for a slim down property tax relief bill. Uh, special session projects rise. So again, uh, although tomorrow, as uh, Senator McKinney told us, it's supposed to be the last day uh, of the session. It uh, seems like a few late nights that are may lead into a special session, uh, definitely dealing with this tax situation. Uh, Governor Jim Pillen is seeking to win a battle now on reducing property taxes in hopes of perhaps a bigger victory later in the long running war against high property taxes in Nebraska. This coming out of the Nebraska Examiner uh, late Tuesday night. So late last night, a new 63-page amendment was filed on the governor's property tax reduction plan that ditches his initial idea of raising state sales tax, which a lot of people were against, and and falls short of his goal of reducing property taxes by 40%. The slimmed-down proposal was portrayed as removing controversial aspects of the idea so it could pass in in the winning days of the session. It opens the door for a special uh, session this summer to more fully accomplish the ambitious goal of reducing loan complained about property taxes laid out by Pillen. Uh, The bill is scheduled for a second round of debate today. Uh, Again, the front loading uh, idea of the existing tax credits, uh, the new amendment comes after a couple of weeks of negotiations. Of course, this has been ongoing, uh, but the new plan would focus on front loading existing income tax credits offered to Nebraskans. Uh, which officials said went unclaimed by more than 60 percent of taxpayers in some areas. Uh, The amendment to legislative bill 388 uh, would also hike taxes by 36 cents uh, to one dollar on a pack of cigarettes. So if anybody uh, smokes cigarettes out there, uh, taxes will go up to a dollar. Also, 100 percent tax on uh, edible hemp products. So, uh, again, if anybody's on the CBD products and gummies and things like that, a 100 percent tax increase on that. Also, 20% tax on vaping products and skill games in common and convenience stores. So, again, those slot machines at the gas station, uh, more taxes on that. And then also eliminate sales tax exemptions on products, including soda pop, candy, internet advertising, and veterinary services for pets. So, definitely pay attention to changes in the taxes because some products that some of you may purchase uh, could be a little more expensive uh, in order to uh, again, in a decrease property taxes, uh, but we will see as that might go into special uh, special sessions. I don't know why I can't say that today. Um, coming up, so something to look out for, y'all. Interesting to me that uh, does it feel a little bit like they they raising taxes on what they what they think what they quote unquote think vices are? 
I'm kind of seeing that as well. Again, cigarettes, edible <laughs> hemp products, skill games, vaping, candy. Yeah. All the things that the that they that they would uh, deem a vice or you know unchristian or whatever. Mm. Uh, oh, they can pay for that. They can they can, you know, we we should tax them more. I don't smoke, but you know how much cigarettes are already. You know how no, much I the don't. taxes is on top of cigarettes already. Well, it was going up thirty six cents. So um, anyway, I just thought that was an interesting point that that's where the, they decided to tax things and and get the money for lowering property taxes uh which is already a touchy subject rg in the chest said no nah, man let's not talk about property taxes because i'm hot as fish grease thinking about mine just and that was my question you know what I, I don't own property so what what is the property tax situation in omaha right now is oh, yeah. it are, are you you know do it's, you it's, all it's, uh support the idea of lowering the property tax it's gone up from a few from a few, uh in, in the case of people in my family it's gone up from you know, a few hundred, three, four hundred, up to like two thousand mm. in the past year. Okay, okay. So I, I, I can imagine that it's kind of like that all over the place. I keep on hearing that. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping in mind that you know, at first I, when I heard this, I, I was kind of like, okay, yeah, lower property taxes. That you know, I hear a lot of people, you know, have heard in the past. I won't say a lot of people, but I have heard few in the past complaining about uh, things going up. Um, and, but when you start to think about it more and more, one, it is kind of interesting that Pillen is one of the largest land owners in Nebraska with his pig farm uh, empire. So maybe, you know, there's a little uh, personal thing behind that for Pillen uh, to try to lower his property taxes for his farms. Uh, <laughs> that's just my thought. Just my thought. That's buddy to God speaking. And, and then also the school situation, how this impacts schools. Uh, we learned that, you know, the way property taxes work, the state doesn't necessarily collect property taxes those property taxes go to the schools and other entities like that uh so again how what impact will that have especially on like ops and other low-income communities uh where the property tax isn't really supporting those systems already uh so again what does that mean in the long run uh, for education and we'll get into this uh, whole school choice situation because uh, apparently more money could be coming out of uh public schools as some people uh will put it so uh, again this is definitely connected to that situation uh i'm miss erica felton in chat uh i'm definitely thinking of her uh when talking about that uh again she owns the the, the playhouse uh she says uh, my property tax went up over a thousand in just one year increasing my mortgage payment since it, it's included in the payment uh, which actually might go to what we were talking about earlier as far as the million dollar median cost for houses uh, maybe property taxes is a part of that you know cost uh, as, as far as just how expensive it is to own and operate a house in these days mm. precious mckesson is already in the chat she says uh the ordinance is hey. bs if they need money just go to the sur surplus of money collected from the restaurant tax they help they, they keep collected mm. uh so uh and i think this is she made that comment back when we were talking about uh the ordinance about you know getting fined for parking on your grass but this yep. applies applies here too you know uh it definitely feels like uh they, if they need more money take it from some other places uh, this RG RG is saying the Puritan approach of pilling in Nebraska, which mm. I think is interesting. Is uh you know we come to find out about pork being a uh, uh, carcin carcinogen. Man, <laughs> man, <laughs> the whole farm full of death. Man, Mr. Mr. Fell says I received a phone call about two weeks ago from NDHHS asking about my usage of nicotine products, including vape and chew. After asking about my uses, I was asked what I thought was a fair tax on each. Hmm. So they they ain't even getting no more options. Ain't even get no more options. How about we up the tax on bacon? There you go. There you go. Uh, I, I, but I am kind of curious. You said take the money from other places. Like okay, tax on bacon. What what else? What else? Because there has been some conversations about where to take the money from. It don't sound like you need to tax nothing. Nothing new. There's already surpluses of money taken from taxes. I remember I was it was in Omaha before they had a restaurant tax. Mm. I remember. I remember when that happened. When that hit, and I was like, "Whoa, that's kind of what happens to the hole, the hole in the wall spot." They got a whole bunch more money to pay. Rest of got, uh, and according to Miss McKesson, they got plenty of restaurant tax money they've been they've been sitting on. And we always hear this all the time about money that they're sitting on or using for other things. It don't sound like you got to tax nothing. How about don't buy a tank this year for the police department or something else? Man. Um, um, Mark Miller, 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 Miller Jenkins says taxing leisure, leisure items seems to be the only the low hanging fruit. 
Yeah. And not just low hanging fruit. It's it's not just like it doesn't sound like leisure items to me. It, because they could be then they should be taxing, you know, gaming, sport, sport guns, you know, uh all kinds of other things that that you consider leisure. This sounds like they try and tax vices. Hmm. Okay. I, I can see the delineation. Um in my opinion. This is Paul B talking. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Mark Manor with a good point as well. It's not just the vices. He says digital advertising tax is going to hurt a lot of small businesses, uh, which is also in there. Internet advertising, uh, as they put it, uh, and veterinary services for pets. You know, people love a beast of the field, man. People love the beast of the field. They going to get taxed as well just to keep the worms down. That was the only one that I was like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> That was the only one I was like, okay, because I mean, think about it. Everything, everything else they read off is what they would consider a vice, and then they mm-hmm. came to like veterinary the bill. I was like, okay. yeah, mm-hmm. they got if they slip one in, <laughs> they got one right <laughs> that that I I consider right. And this is interesting because I'm looking at uh, Marianne Williams, um, uh, who thinks that taxing cigarettes looks looks like it makes sense. So it's all real personal. What we decide mm-hmm. is is a uh, is it should be taxable or not. I kind of tend to feel like we're overtaxed so many different ways in the first place. Why do we need more things to be taxed? Mm. We're so overtaxed already. You taxed on the money you make. You taxed on the money that you spent off the the money that you just got. The taxes going to take it out of you. You got to pay to. You got to have taxes on your utilities. Taxes on living in the house. You got to have taxes on for everything all the time. So they. So now you got to have taxes on your on your stuff. If they're going to allow any kind of CBD or any kind of whatever, you know, cannabis or whatever in the state, then that's the first mm-hmm. thing going will get taxed. Uh, Marianne Williams says taxing cigarettes used to make sense to me. But when people stop buying them, what gets cut to make up for the tobacco tax? <laughs> I mean, Good is, is, is liquor taxed? Is li- liquor extra taxed? I don't know. It's sales taxed. Mama God says, so just pass a law on marijuana and spread the cost. By the way, I don't smoke, but believe legalizing will boost revenue. That's the first thing they're going to overtax if, it, if, they, if they did it. They're looking for some money. But, you know, like I said, everybody we ever, we ever talked to in those, in those rooms say there's already money they'd be sitting on. So that's what I don't get, why, that, why it's always got to come from somewhere else. And, and it comes from stuff that, you know, does all, is a whole lot of people, uh, you know, who, who's, who's the, who does it sound like it's pointed to mm-hmm. all the time? Yeah, uh, actually, shout out to, to Princess Leia Cates, uh, again, former uh, journalist for uh, The Reader. Uh, if you remember, she did the whole story on the, the TANF and how they're just sitting on those funds and acting like families don't need help. And there's millions and millions of dollars just sitting in, you know, a, a, a account or bank somewhere uh, for temporary assistance for needy families. And they're right. just sitting on that. So, yeah, there are surpluses here and there. But uh, again, it seems like uh, that money could be going down. As the senators, you know, reminded us, the, the state is a couple years away from um, losing, you know, and being in debt and being behind. I, I, and I asked Senator McKinney on Monday if he, you know, believed that property taxes should. So, you know, the idea of lowering property taxes, I think a lot of people would agree with to a certain extent. Um, but where where do you find it? What where, where, you know, where do you, where else do you get the money? As Paul said, and apparently, according to this article, even the changes that they're making with this, it won't be enough. Um, The tax changes, according to this article, would only generate about two hundred million dollars a year in extra revenue for the state, uh, which will fall short, well short of the hope for one billion in new revenue uh, that when combined with past bills would allow a 40 percent reduction in local property taxes for K through 12 schools. Uh, which again is kind of the big issue hanging in the balance of this whole property tax situation. So uh, there's still about eight hundred million dollars in, in tax that, that they have to find from other places. Uh, wh- where will that come from? I don't know. They'll find Let's something see. else that poor people do that they can tax more. Uh, the, the the biggest thing, just to shift gears a little bit, the biggest thing about this situation for me is the fact that we all we're we're talking about how OPS. Uh, and, and school districts, you know, are the quality of your school is directly affected by the quality of the, the surrounding area and the, and the housing and the taxes that are taken from that. So those those how those property taxes go go to schools. And that's a, that's an issue. So uh, so Maggie Me- Miller Jenkins is saying, wonder why they'd be punished. They'd be uh, pushing for privatized schooling at the same time 
as lowering property taxes. So mm. and you made this point a little earlier. Why why are they doing they're they're lowering property taxes, which is already going to take money away from the schools. And on top of that, they're uh they're they're they have this these ordinances that are they're trying to push through to take more money out of public school for private schools. Which kind of is another uh, hot topic article that that we got going on right now too, because that's an issue. Um, so you know, that's to me, that's kind of like a lot of that. Maybe we can jump into that, jump into talking about that real quick, because yeah. we we thought that this this whole thing about the school vouchers was done, but as Man. we we've talked about this past couple of weeks, it fired back up in a different way. Yeah, yeah, and it's, they seem uh, pretty hell bent on pushing it through. It has advanced to the next round. Uh, this also coming out of the Nebraska Examiner, and, and it is connected to the property tax situation because, uh, again, how do we fix the education problem if property taxes are going down, if OPS, as Senator Wayne has tipped us off to, is not accepting uh, an increase on their tax levy, where are the funds going to come from? And now uh, there's looking like more funds possibly coming out of uh, public school funding. At least that's what uh, Senators Greg George Dungan uh, of Lincoln is saying. Uh, again, LB 1402. Uh, which is uh, sponsored by uh, Senator Lou Ann Linehan, uh, again, is pushing through. It actually passed on a 31 to 12 vote in advance in the legislature uh, from first round debate, uh, which came after the bar minimum of 33 senators voted to halt a filibuster. So there was a potential filibuster uh, for this bill. And but the 33 votes did come through uh, to stop the filibuster. Again, two senators, Myron Dorn of Adams, Nebraska, and Teresa Ebach of Sumner, Nebraska, voted for closure, uh, but were present and not voting on advancing the actual bill, uh, while opponents of the bill called it unconstitutional, which is a, a central point to, to remember. Again, the constitutionality of this bill is at question because the bill was supposed to go to a public vote. And people are saying that this bill being pushed through is taking the right of the people to vote on the issue away. Advocate says students who struggle in public schools, especially those in low income families, deserve the option of private or parochial school through what amounts to a school voucher. Uh, but again, opponents are questioning the legality of this situation. Uh, as chat chimers have mentioned, Senator Justin Wayne is one of the advocates for this bill. Uh, he says every child should have access to high quality education, not by chance, not by privilege, but by right. Uh, also, the main sponsor, again, Senator Luann Linehan, says students from low income families who get priority for the opportunity scholarship. So, again, that's important to remember as well. Students from low income families will be the ones at the top of the list for these scholarships. Uh, she says they don't have the same choice of switching to a private or parochial school as do children uh, from more affluent family. Uh, so. Uh, again, why is it that we in the legislature don't feel that kids have a choice, says Linehan, uh, pointing that the $10 million that this bill will cost is actually a tiny fraction of what's spent on public schools. Uh, but again, the constitutionality of this will be uh, uh, challenged. Uh, again, there's actually a second round of debate today, so we'll keep our eyes on how this plays out. Uh, if the bill does pass, it is expected to be challenged more, uh, either by a referendum to put it on the fall ballot or by a legal challenge uh, that it violates, again, the state's constitution on appropriation of public funds. So not only taking away uh, the, the people's right to vote on the issue, as they were expecting to do in November, uh, but it also uh, challenges the constitution, which states that uh, state can the state cannot appropriate funds from public schools to non-public schools, which a lot of people say uh, is the issue with this, uh, directly taking money out of public schools to pay for private schools, uh, which some with challenges against the Constitution. So, again, it's not a, a final thing. This is not passed. This is not said or done. There will be a lot of back and forth on this, uh, but a lot of movement on, on this issue. And it is a very nuanced conversation. What can be done about education? What we, we all agree that OPS and public school is not up to par. We all agree that public school is not doing what it's expected to do. Uh, but how do we fix that? Well, we got to fix it. Because there's no amount of private schools or, or anything that is going to fulfill the need of so many kids. It's, it, even if they're, even if they do this and they give vouchers and they figure out how to get kids to move to private schools and all the rest of this, even if they do all that, there's still the majority of the kids are still going to be in public school. So they, they got to, if they're going to do it, they got to do both. It, it's always a, you know, again, find the money from somewhere else. 
Why, why, why do you have to take it from OPS mm. with so many, so many reserves everywhere all the time? This doesn't make any sense to me. Ten million. This will cost. Yeah. Um, Maggie Ma- Miller Jenkins says no one seems to mention that uh, the right to right to education is constitutionally mandated. Private schools are not legally bound to abide by the same doctrine. Mm. Uh, I think I saw uh, Anthony Rogers Wright in the chat saying, uh, this is a lie. This, this is something they always lean on. He says, uh, it always starts with a small component of the budget. Then Nebraska will become New Orleans, <laughs> where there are no public schools later for that. Man. Wow. Didn't know Man. that. Yeah. That's... No, pub- no public schools in New Orleans. That's heavy. It's very heavy. Uh, earlier in the chat, I think Amy H. Dot said that uh, she remembers when the restaurant tax was supposed to be temporary. This is this is another thing that I'm I'm afraid of too. There, if they, they if, when they make moves, they're they're permanent. It's they seem to be permanent around here. Hmm. So yeah, what's going to happen there if they start if they start taking uh, funds away from from school to do to do something else? That's that's going that's going to be an ongoing thing until. You know, like like you said, like I hadn't thought about it that far out, but Anthony Rogers Wright is saying it could be New Orleans. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, the senators did, you know, tip us off that Lincoln and, and other areas of the state uh, could be having, you know, having some issues with funding their schools and, and, you know, having to make some hard decisions very soon. And, you know, if things are kind of coming together the way they seem to be with this bill and the tax, the property tax situation. Yeah, it could, it could get a lot worse before it gets a lot better. Uh, but, you know, that that brings it. What do we do as as a community? What do we do as a people? Um, of course, the the housing, the homeschooling uh, component of this is an interesting uh, portion. But even that, it doesn't quite feel like a solution. You know what I mean? It's just an element uh, of it. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't have the answers. I don't know. It seems like Guillermo Pena has a pretty good idea, though, as far as funding uh, says, how about reducing your taxes if you mow your lawns or build a community garden and increase taxes on corporate landowners? who own more than seven houses, which we are learning. There's uh, quite a few out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like they can just come and ask us in the chat chimers, but Man. We'll get some good ideas on what to do and where to get the money from. Yeah. Maybe, no, maybe I, they I, are. I maybe, maybe they are taking notes. <laughs> oh, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the solutions we come up with doesn't, doesn't help their, their causes. Mm, that part. Some of the problem, that part. right. Uh, it's 8.02 right now. If you believe in the concept of time, you're in now in the second hour of First Sky Omaha Radio. First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. Paul B. He's buddy to God. All hey. the chat chimers are fired up this morning. Man. What happened? What happened? We had a, we had an eclipse and y'all just lost your minds now. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> going off. Going off. Uh, yeah, kind no, of, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I, I want to get back to, to just an element of this that I didn't mention. Uh, That is important Uh, under that law. uh, Again, more than a thousand students are expected to receive uh, opportunity scholarships of up to eleven thousand dollars each to attend private or parochial school Uh, this year. However, Linehan introduced a new version in large part to avoid an expensive campaign battle over the referendum placed on the November ballot uh, to nullify last year's law. So, again, a thousand students are expected to receive scholarships of up to eleven thousand each, which is not enough. Uh, and on that note, let's go ahead and bring our special guest that's waiting in the wings, ladies and gentlemen, the elector, <laughs> Christmas McKesson in hey, the house. Hey, history making Pete. Hey, y'all. Long time no see. How you doing? Yeah. Uh, it's early. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we already gave you the 15 minutes past where we usually have some. I know. In. And I made it to the office. I made it to Starbucks and I made it to the office and I, with all, <laughs> with Gene tearing up all 72nd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, haven't that's mentioned it. that. Yeah, haven't mentioned that. That's that's coming. That's going. That's going to be going on for some months, y'all. So look out. I, I believe that's between Dodge and Western, seventy uh, no, second. But it's also up toward um, uh, up to Ames because you got in front of um, what's the name? To each his own. Mm. To each his own. To mm. each his own. I'm yeah, a proud yeah. union member. To each its own. <laughs> but again, <laughs> um. Yeah, so, yeah, that's okay. where we're at. Okay. Yeah, you might want to voice seventy seven. Hi, now. Amy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us today, man. It's always so so good to uh, speak with you, and it's been a while. We sorry that we haven't had you on uh, it, it recently, but there's a lot of stuff happening right now. But before we get to all that, we got to ask about you. How you doing? How your daughter? How, how's the family? Yeah, what's going on with you? 
It's been a minute since we caught up. We good. Taylor about to finish her um sophomore year at Creighton. Already? Already. Yes. Halfway already. done already? Halfway Jeez. done already. That's crazy. Um, yeah, so, you know, things are good. You know, we just, you know, keep pushing and me just minding my business and mind the business that pays me and there you go. staying out the there you go. There you go. You, you're lagging a little bit on your internet. So if you got windows open, close those windows down on there. That'll Hold on, y'all. Bit. Y'all know, you know I got like 50 million windows open on my computer. That's why I said it. That's why I said it. Because I know you do. Y'all. You constantly, <laughs> constantly looking at stuff that's going on. You've been doing some yeah. globe travel. You've been going uh, doing some uh, traveling too, some cloud hopping recently too, right? Yeah, but not really as much. I mean, just really just doing some... um. Hold on just a second. I'm trying to, I really have that many windows open, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See? And um, really want to tell Cox Cable that all this money that we pay in, I shouldn't have this problem because we have like the highest internet. So hopefully that works better, y'all. I literally just closed down mm-hmm. like 20 minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Always, always close them down for you get on. Um, and you might have an option with Google with Google Fiber chiming up now. They're ready to battle Cox in a minute. We might have finally have somebody we can say, "Hey, y'all better straighten up. Calling. Count your days." So is it is it like Fiber? Some some new yeah. no new company has been calling. There's hmm. several new companies out now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah they've been laying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm loving some that's better. Some kind of, yeah, but yeah, it's better already. Doing, doing some neighborhood work and then also doing um, some training and stuff. Um, for different um, staff within the party and stuff, and just you know, just just again laying down the foundation. Mm-hmm. Before we get to the politics, uh, Amy H. got a question. How are things going at Nona? Yeah. So we na- are. Na- our neighborhood association. Good so we're going this. going good. Um, we have our, our next meeting is April twenty fifth um, on Thursday, and then we also have. Um, our neighborhood cleanup on the 27th that Saturday. So with Keep Omaha Beautiful from nine to two at Skinner Magnet. So we're slowly getting back in motion. Um, we have, I think, think three to four members of Nona who will be attending the National Neighborhood Conference in Lubbock, Texas in May. So we're, we're moving slowly, but surely getting back into the swing of things. One thing that I have noticed is that there's a lot of people and organizations that are doing the work in the neighborhood. So it makes no sense to reduplicate the efforts. It just really mm-hmm. makes sense to collaborate. And so looking at how we can collaborate with all the other organizations to making sure that we're protecting and, and building a better neighborhoods in North Omaha. Boy, you said it. That's that's our motto around here. <laughs> we, there's no point in duplicating efforts. We need to collaborate. Man. Yep. No there sense in doing that. It's too many of us. Too many. It's too, it's too much work. For all of us to be, you know, it's a, it's a piece of the pie for everybody. But if we work together, um, you definitely will see a stronger, um, a stronger sense of belonging. And then we can actually, um, it kind of rolls into the politics piece where we can mm-hmm. actually then turn around and um, put our work behind, put put our work behind the mission and be able to put hold um, the elected officials accountable. Um, and I heard y'all talking about that ordinance, and I am not. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's not. Hey, man, I can hear it now. I can hear. I'm gonna park my car on somebody's grass this weekend. I don't not a good oh. ordinance. I mean, it's not a good ordinance. It's not mm. a good ordinance. It's it's nothing but policing, um, policing the the. And I'm not gonna call people poor because people aren't poor. You're only mm-hmm. poor in your mind. There but you, you, if you don't have the means to put extra in your budget, you're now attacking people who are already. Um, balancing what they have to. You have people balancing, trying not to be homeless. Um, I, I was recently talking to, a, um, a, and I don't call them constituents because they're my community members. She, uh, I had a community member call me. She was like, Precious, they're seeing a high rise in um, homelessness um, of, of families now in the shelters. Mm. And that hurt me so bad. I'm like, gosh, why are we seeing that when we know that we have um, tons of money that has been given? I'm sorry, I'm cutting down some windows again, y'all. I feel like I'm lagging again. How many windows do you need? She said 50, 50 billion. I have like 50 yeah. windows. I only have one now. But yeah, so um, when there you start go. to see that, you now have people now going into the neighborhoods and you got police who are going to be, who should be doing more 
Like if you want a community, if you want to police the community, how about you police the community and making sure that um, people, kids have um, basketball hoops or do do all that other stuff, you know, to be be more positive. But now you're gonna be riding mm. through the neighborhoods, and if somebody park in the driveway, what if I'm parked in the, in my driveway because I'm move? I mean, in the yard because I'm moving some furniture. Well, they they said that you can be there temporarily for for that type of thing, but. And- ah. I, I can t- I can go right now to one house in North Omaha. I know exactly where this house is, and I promise you, this gentleman will get so many tickets because he has so many cars parked in his front yard. Hey, I got I a, got a few. Car. I got to get a, tr- a truck off my sister's grass right now. <laughs> yeah, I got a few I houses think, I, I can think, think of. I, and I really want. I, didn't, I have not read the ordinance, but I really want to know where is this money going to? Because you know, like mm. some of the parking um, tickets go to um the 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 school the school fund um i remember they'll always put on there wh- where that ticket is funding i really want to know where that ticket is funding because i know when i worked in the courthouse it would break down each department where that ticket went and it's like man hmm. that's a good question that's a good question uh, again fifty dollars for the ticket fifty dollars for uh court fees and, and you know that hundred dollars can be the difference of people you know eating or or you know Having a phone bill paid that month, so not to mention you have to take off of work to go to court and how much you lose. Take off work to go to court, and then some people don't get vacation, or there, there's you know, or you you've used your vacation because you have a sick child, and now you got to take time. It, it, it's just a lot of barriers behind it. And um, mm. respect to um, Councilwoman um, Johnson for voting no. Uh, I know sometimes mm. she gets a lot of pushback on there, but again, she knows the impact that is going to ha- that's going to take place in her community. And um, yeah, so I will be emailing my 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 guy Pete. I got to let Mr. Festerson know I'm not happy with that one. Yeah. You know, I'm not yeah. happy with yeah. that one. Let him know. Probably Festerson cool. I love Festerson. I'm not gonna. I love me some Pete Festerson. That's. Yeah, I mean, he's. he's cool. that's, yeah, you know, he's been in the game for for many many years. Um, but I mean, I still feel. But this also translates to more of us got to go down and testify at the city council level. Right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> many of and and I say that because you can we can send all the letters we want. But we we definitely got to be able to go down and really speak and and give them the the the, the real life because some of these people have they ever really parked in I mean only a few maybe have ever parked in their own your yard mm, yeah and you know it could make a difference like Festerson could have been the one that's it was a very close vote it was a four to three vote so you know one one council person could have could have changed this whole conversation uh, so yeah definitely definitely speaking up and, and I was gonna ask so. We all know that this it's it's a petty situation that's going to have an unnecessary huge impact. But I'm I'm curious, what are the real issues that's that's you know in the community that the people are actually you know really addressing that needs to be addressing? You you mentioned homelessness. Uh, what are some of the other things that are actually you know issues in the neighborhoods? I mean, what um, homelessness? Um, I mean, safe safe neighborhoods, um, mm. slum lords, people who mm. are just basically putting. Um, duct tape to hold things together for people and really really truly not um you know um taking care of their um their the, the people who are living in the homes also mm-hmm. the fact that people are getting their rent their rent is being um, ri- um risen um or arose in and they're like wait a minute before they were paying um maybe let's say they said a thousand dollars maybe three to four years ago now they're seeing their rent now at sixteen seventeen hundred dollars and mm. that, that goes back to a lot of the property taxes all the different things but then you have a lot of people who are being who are saying oh you got to have three times the amount of rent who has three times that amount of rent when we don't even have livable wages in the state like Man. come on now so again now we're now you're pushing people to homelessness because they're barely making it there's some people if their rent goes up one more time they're basically on the line of losing their home because now their their rent is more than they can afford because they're not making a livable wage they should be making more money and that's the part too so it's a lot that's going on um that we need to be addressing um when it comes to people and in the, in the issues that are happening not putting 50 not charging two people 50 dollars to put um for putting their car and i say again right. north omaha's a gold mine right people want to live there people who don't look like us want to move back to north omaha because they want the amenities that come Man. along with north omaha they want to be able to get to the luminary and they want to be able to get to the riverfront they want to get to the thing i tell people all the time 
I'm not moving from my house because I know how long it takes me to get to the airport from the time I park in the parking garage to go through TSA. Mm -hmm. I know my benefits and people want those amenities. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's taking longer now to get out there from 152nd in Maple to get to the airport now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now, now, North Omaha is, now North Omaha is the prime real estate. Right. But oh, yeah. You have you noticed they don't re, they don't say North Omaha crime? They kind of ease down the reporting in the Omaha World Herald. Hmm, I haven't noticed. Yeah. Hmm. I don't they pay attention to the crime section in Omaha World Herald much anymore. Yeah, I was watching Channel 3 News last night. They have a North Omaha hmm. neighborhood reporter. They do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. Oh, that. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I see y'all. Yeah, yeah. Paul said he's not <laughs> yeah. taking notes, but I, I don't know, man. I, I, <laughs> I beg to differ. Yeah. Yeah, watch it. You got to watch that stuff. I mean, North Omaha, I mean, and, and I'm always going to represent North Omaha because that's where I'm from. That's where I live. That's what I believe in. And um, yeah, you can't, you, yeah, our, our community is prime real estate. And so hold on to your stuff. Man. Hold on to your properties. Help your family hold on to their properties. Yes. Help the grandparents. Right. If you know you got grandparents who grandpa was taking care of everything and grandpa don't know, the, grandma don't know she has a homestead. Make sure you mm. are getting that paperwork because there is people that will come in who wait to see if someone's behind on their taxes and will snatch up that house that fast. Oh, yeah. We, we, oh, no. we've talked about it. We find out about it in the, in the morning newspaper over, over your more uh, drunken ship coffee. <laughs> you, yeah. you find it. Oh, they sold the house. I'm in what, what, what? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We've been talking about this for a minute. Like <laughs> we had a whole season on space is the place and it's never, yeah. we never stopped talking about it because the housing crisis has gotten worse in the, in the past four seasons of this show. Uh, mm -hmm. and to the point where now we heard on the news this morning, the medium, uh, of house, uh, purchase prices a million dollars in the country, million dollars. And they've, they, there's like 255 cities they, they, they surveyed and it ain't just LA and New York no more. It's other places that are, are, you know, you know, if it's, if it's a million dollar medium, it's like 500,000. It's probably like the median here. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's really expensive. It's crazy. Uh, uh, big, big developers are coming in and building apartment complexes. And, and uh, they, they say they're going for market rate on those apartments, which are way too expensive. Those are the things that we're talking about. We're living in apartments that, uh, that, the, that you got to have three times the amount of, of income in order to have to just to live in an apartment. Man. And it don't, it's crazy. Who has six thousand dollars? But but that's crazy because the apartments that we do have in North Omaha, these landlords are just basically getting to buy with the bare minimum of right. keeping them up. Right. Carpet about mm -hmm. this thin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slap Can't new lay paint on the, on the mold. You know, slap new paint over the mold. Put a little mold protector, and then they. Um. I. I there was one landlord, and it's, it's this blue color right here. You can go around North Omaha and all his houses is painted this this light blue color. Mm. I used to call that the Section 8 color paint because that, every single house you knew was his. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Anybody know God rest his soul, Jafar? Mm. Yeah. This, this, mm. was his, this was his signature color on all his houses. Wow. And, and no one was holding him accountable. The paint was just horrible. Hell, I lived in one of his houses painted like this. The whole house, everything was mm. painted blue. So they never yeah. had to go outside to see if the sky was blue. The whole damn house was blue. <laughs> <In five hours. laughs> my mom, my mom, one day got so mad she went to Home Depot and bought white paint. She was like, "I can't take this no can't more." Take it. I, I can't take it. Can't take it. Slapping paint on top of paint, you can literally—it's like taking shellac off. You can take like a, a a knife and just peel it off if you want to have some entertainment. Wow. Because they just slapping the paint on. <laughs> Oh, just man. five, six, seven, eight, nine coats. <laughs> yeah, we just gotta do yeah. better. We, we gotta do better, y'all. Um. Yeah, we got uh, that. Let me jump into the chat real quick. Anthony Rogers Rice says the sixth stage of gentrification are in full effect in Omaha as it was in L.A., New York, San Francisco, Chi-Town, Atlanta, New Orleans, Boston, and which political party controls these cities. We're going to get into uh, the discussions that we need to have. I appreciate you coming into the chat. And uh, we know that we have people in the chat, uh, Anthony Rogers Wright being one of them, that is not a Biden fan. Can we I just say this real quick? Sure. Mm -hmm. I understand what he's saying. Mm-hmm. But the six stages of gentrification did not just start when those Democratic senators, those Democratic mayors got into office mm. or became mayors. It takes a step to get there. So let's not put let's not let's not push that agenda that is just them. Let's talk about what happened in the past to get it to where it's at today. That's what we keep messing up. We keep wanting to say what's going on currently, but how did we get here? Let's hold everybody accountable. Now my computer is about to freaking go. Oh, hold on, y'all. 
you you you, what, you what, we don't have to we don't have to give you a pre call and be like, is your computer plugged in? Is, is your window shut down? What's going? On? Whoa, what you got going on back there? That's my needle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Papa Biden back there. <laughs> Uh, but I, I want to let you get back to what you were saying, but I just wanted to say uh, uh, that uh, yeah, get your questions ready for for Miss McKesson. Let's talk about this yeah. situation. Uh, we and uh, and I appreciate uh, Anthony Rogers Wright already coming in with respect and and every, anybody who disagrees with Biden and and you know you know us just want to remind everybody to have the conversation how we had the conversation, but let's definitely talk about it because it's been a thing. Uh, so I appreciate it very very much. Um, but uh, also I'm sorry to cut you off, but go ahead and what were you saying? No, I'm just saying we just got to um, understand that, like where where it started, because I we hear so much that, oh, the Democrats, 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 Democrats. But it's like, where did it start, though? Who who honestly started? Like, it's a history, a pattern of history of all politicians who have been a part of gentrification, not just Democrats. So mm -hmm. I just want to say that we can't put the blame on just one party. This is a whole system yeah, that yes. has failed people especially african americans it's not just because it's a democrat because when we was when trump was in office everybody was saying trump 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 did this trump did this trump did this but then when biden got you know so it, it just it goes with this so i'm i'm learning now to understand that one person did not create this this problem this hmm. problem or the things that are happening right now it was creating the history of it happening and how do we as a as a person change that or where we're at right now so that's how i look at it so i i agree with know. that i agree with that but i also think there's value in, in looking at what's happening right now because because who's who's in charge of what's going on right now has the power to maybe change the trajectory of that mm -hmm. so what are they actually what is actually happening that is is is, is uh is going on to actually change that trajectory mm -hmm. um and i'm, I'm asking I'm, I'm glad to have you on to talk about this with you in particular because every time i talk to you you know off screen or whatever you you remind me about a lot of the programs a lot of things that biden biden put in place a lot of the wins that we forget are wins uh and so on and so forth so yes i i totally agree with you that this is a, a whole system that is failing and we can talk all day long about how trump and his campaigns are failing but what, what how about the democratic party what can we do what can the democratic party do better I mean, what we can do better, I mean, we got to listen to people more, you know, and we got to um, really listen to the communities that are really, and I, and I say this, and, and, and trust me, anything that I say right now, I'll say to anybody, I'll say to the president, I have no problem, to the vice president, um, because at the end of the day, when I show up, I show up as a black woman, I show up for the issues that have impacted my communities. I don't know how mm -hmm. a white person how it impacts them because I'm not white. I'm not a white woman. I'm a black woman. So I have to talk about my my experiences. And I feel that there's a lot that we should be doing more when it comes to black and brown communities. Um, I do I do believe in reparations. I, I'm not ever going to shy away from that because I feel that um, every other um, group has received reparations in some some shape or form um, mm. for for what they have went through in their their what their culture has went through and we deserve that ourselves. Um, I feel that when we vote, like stick to it. Don't don't ask us to vote. I, and people say I've I've ran I've I've not ran but I've been in this same space where um, the black vote is not your breaking case of emergency vote. You have to mm. make sure that you are doing the work. And so we have to hold anybody accountable. And when I came into this work, that was one of the things I said. We cannot be the breaking case of emergency vote. And I have full autonomy of my work. No one can tell me how my black lived experience or how I should show up when um, when there's stuff that's going on. But then I'm also mindful, too, that if it's stuff that's going on in this world that does not impact me closely, I can't speak on it and I won't speak on it because we got homelessness in this state, in this country. We got people, we have mental health issues going on in this country and in this city. We have kids killing kids in this country, in this city. And so I have to focus on what's going on in my backyard because one day I could be driving down the street and a teenager could come and put a gun in my head and I got to be able to, how, how would I react to that? I can't focus on everything else that doesn't impact me right now. I got to focus on what's going on here. I got nephews here. I got nephews. I got to make sure don't get gunned down in, this, in the city of Houston. I got nieces. Yeah. I got to make sure don't get taken out of this. It's, it's, it's a whole big thing. And so I tell people that all the time. When y'all come to me, no, I'm talking about what's going on here because this is what I represent. I came back to Nebraska because I love this city. I could have been anywhere in this world, but I came back here because I see that there's work to be done. And I want to be that voice and I want to be that help. And I want to be I want to work in a partnership with other people. We don't have to agree. We don't. But again, right. we as a party have a lot to do when it comes to making sure that black and brown people feel 
that we are appreciated, feel like we can live quality life like everybody else. So there's a lot we can do, honestly. Anthony Rogers Rice said, Precious and I don't agree on a lot politically, but she always shows up as her full black self, and that I appreciate and love about her. Same. Uh, Tony Johnson is asking, what are the local wins in North Omaha on these issues? The local wins in North Omaha. I'll be honest with you, Tony. I'm still trying to see many of these local wins because, again, I look around our city and I see how everything else is growing up around our is pulling up around our city, man, around man, Omaha. Man, man, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna keep it 100. We got a lot of work to do because there's no reason why Blackstone in that district has grown so fast. Midtown in North Omaha still like I think the first new building that we will have in on 20 on North 24th Street where will be the building that Carmen Tapio builds. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We we so so we I see the different things. I see the money coming in, but I need to see I need to see more. It's all happening around us. It's around talking- us. Jobs all that stuff is happening behind us. Every time I go to Blackstone, I promise you, I feel like, you know how they, they tell you when you are a tourist and you always looking at the sky and somebody going to mm-hmm. hit you on the head? That's how mm-hmm. I feel. Oh. I'll be like, oh, oh. what did they do that? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But I, don't go, I don't go to Blackstone no more. They took away the high fi house and put a bowling alley in it, so I'm done with Blackstone. But no, nah, I'm just playing. I know what you're saying. It does. It feels like that in that Exarban. It feels like that uh, I mean, everywhere. Midtown. Downtown. Downtown, right. And and, 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 Tiff, and we talk about Tiff Alley all the time too, which is a trip, because you know it feels like they they using the blight of North Omaha in order to build all this stuff around North Omaha, and that's exactly what's happening. But it feels like that in a big big way. Um, Kimmer is, is expressing something too. She says, "I'm just I just want our local Dems to stop trying to take our vo- voice away, like our uh, our county commissioners. Oh, and, and this city council vote. Like, where are the democratic values?" Uh, this she's reminded me that there are people in, in uh, that are chat chimers that have that have left the Democratic Party because they feel like their voice is getting stifled. Uh, yeah, we'll say do. you on that. You know, I never I, and I say this and I, I respect my Democrat, uh, my, my fellow Democrats. I do. But then I also have to say when wrong is wrong. And the fact that they don't have public comment now with the commissioners, that is taking a whole voice away. Mm-hmm. That is wrong. Um, the people have a right to voice the concerns that especially that's happening in their county city. And when you start to take away that voice, it seems to me like you're trying to, you're, you're, you're no better than what's going on with the other side of trying to take away our vote. Right. And it's not right. And so, um, you know, the accountability piece, like I tell people is electing people that you want in office. That's just how it is. No, no seat um, is protected because you're a Democrat. The right. seats are open for anybody to run. What we build here is just the infrastructure to help you with the resources. But no seat is guaranteed for one person. So mm. run for office. Don't let nobody tell you can't run because there's another Democrat in there. That don't mm. mean nothing. Run. Yeah. No, the, no, you but you won't get the same support from the from the party if you yes, run you against do. another. Do you? Yeah, okay. you you you. The party remains neutral. So when there's two Democrats in the race, we remain neutral as endorsing. But you receive the same um, the same benefits as another Democrat. So if I send out an email to uh, an email for I'll just use I'll just use um, just anybody. If you're a Democrat, you both get an email that you can send to our entire listserv to raise money. Um, you'll both be on the website. You both get access to the voting system. Um, you know, so we just always do that. Um, and that's how it works. Um, no, no income. And that's the thing. No incumbent is endorsed by the Democratic Party. Mm. You can put, no mm. one can tell you you can't put your name on the ballot. And I try to tell people from the out, who are on the outside who don't work on the inside cannot ever tell me how the process works. I've been doing this since 2018. <laughs> well, we, and you're here to explain how it works to us that, that aren't in the room. So appreciate and who, it. And who, who's a who's a perfect example of running against an incumbent is Brie Fool. Mm. Brie will tell okay. you she was never blocked on anything when she ran for office, yeah, and she sure took out an incumbent. 
Yeah, so so I'm, she three, ran four. against Mark Snow from them. Yes, season. yes. I forgot so she won. We remain so we remain neutral as a as an endorsement, but I mean we still give them them if they want if we they need to mail mail out if they need to do anything they don't coordinate on our mail program. We we do everything um, because I, I feel I feel it needs to be fair, clear across the board. No nobody's seat is uh, covered just because you're a Democrat. If some because you can't tell somebody they can't run. Now, if, if is there people who gatekeep? Yes, there is. Yeah. Not gonna sit there in front. Yes, there is people that gatekeep. But on the other part, you need people who need to um, step up to the plate and go into the office and run for office. Yeah, I, that was definitely a thing when we were speaking to uh, Senator Wayne about, you know, who's going to step up to to fulfill his seat after he's term limited. Shout out to Ashley Spivey uh, for for stepping up. And, um, well, you know, that's that's in. Go ahead. But there's two Democrats running. I always got to make sure, you know, as my job, there is two Democrats running in that race. Um, but I will. I, I mean, I, I have to remain neutral. because Everybody knows that Ashley is one of my best friends, but I am remaining neutral. Um, okay. and, you know, um, and I tell them run the race that you run, they both get the same benefits, um, of, of the party. Um, but the, whatever they do, they need to do. Um, yeah. Who, who's the other Democrat? Just, just kidding. Tracy Hightower, Henny. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We knew that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I keep forgetting her. Um, that we got some, we got some people in the chat that are, are, are talking about some of the, 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 uh, national issues with the democratic party. Uh, I want to get to that, but, I, but before that, do, uh, before we do that, I want to stay a little bit more local. Uh, because there's been a, there was a rally last night uh, where uh, Republicans were trying to. Uh, oh, I was like, what rally? Gotcha. Yeah, 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 there was a Republican rally last night. I should have said that. <laughs> a Republican rally last night that uh, that is is really pushing this whole issue to try to uh, come as one unified state in one vote, and they want to take away and you. You are the elector, so uh, so it's, it's it's very significant. And now everything I'm reading is saying it's going to come down to Biden is going to. Uh, probably win if the blue dot here in Omaha is stays a blue dot and can and can vote for him. Uh, what what say you on all this stuff on all these issues here with uh, everybody pushing for that in the state so hard, including Trump? So I think there's something else. This is my personal opinion, not the opinion of the Democratic Party. This is my personal opinion. Walk in and watch this. I think that there is something underlining going on, and it goes back to the school support our schools and mm. Charlie Kirk's um, interest. Because right now, Charlie Kirk gets $30 million a year from Arizona for his private schools. Okay? Mm. Yes. And when he does that, he can then come in and put a school here in Nebraska. So I think mm. I think it's more, it's not, it's more of the, it's something, it's something else because it was too convenient that Charlie Kirk does a tweet. Then all of a sudden, here comes Pillin with his uh, winner take all press release, and knowing that this bill was still in committee, this bill was not wasn't even wasn't even going to see the light of day. No mm. one had the votes, and then all of a sudden you got this. Let, let's bring this attention to Nebraska. Then you got the former president making his little comments. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, if you look at the the that one vote can make a could make a difference in the election. Um, but it, it did before. Years. I remember doing that before, right? I mean, we've used it twice. I mean, we've used right. it in 2008 mm -hmm. and we've used it in um in 2020. But they're saying that basically they're saying like if they do the numbers, it could come like it could be like a 269, 269. That one vote could send it over. Not saying the other states wouldn't come in after that, because, I mean, in, in 2020, Biden had 306, mm -hmm. 306 total. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's something underlying that they're doing. Um, you know, the um it's it's just it's it's just bad. So what we did last night, we had a, a a truck going around with different graphics calling them out on their stuff. Um we know that at this point in time, Senator um the speaker arch has said there's no path to be able to mm -hmm. um add that to any bills. Um, but then you also now see him. Um, Pillin now saying um, it's a possible, he, he, you know, like a possible um, special session. But at this point, I don't think he can get a special session. I don't think he'll have enough votes because most likely people don't want to be here. Then people want to be gone after the session is over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you have um, the fact that the, the disrespect to Senator Brewer, you know, I may not agree on everything with Senator Brewer, but one thing um, I had the honor of sitting next to him on a three hour flight. <laughs> 
And um, it was beautiful mm -hmm. to sit next to him because mm -hmm. number one, um, he talks about all the things that he did in it, in the military. Um, and for him to be, you know, he's a Native American, you know, and he's just talking about his service. And for somebody, for a president, a former president who couldn't even go to the military because he had um, sp foot spurs or flat feet, whatever the hell he had, to talk about a man who has served our country and received three Medal of Honors on top of that was over in Ukraine when um, it started helping them on the front lines. For him to attack him, it was wrong. And it mm. just shows the disrespect that this man has for our country and for our veterans. Wow. Mm. Talking about Trump. Yeah. Are we in are are we in fear of losing the blue dot? No. Over any of this? No. I think people just need to um the way it goes, um, they don't have the votes to be able to take us to a winner take all. Um, but it's funny how they're not messing with uh, Maine. <laughs> see Larkin in, in the chat saying talking about Maine. Maine oh, so, oh I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, you, you're right on point. You're right on point. Yeah, Maine so is the only other us, state you know? that has a split electoral vote. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and I think you might be on to something with this whole uh, school connection. That, that's that's very interesting. Again, if you remember, Betsy DeVos was behind, you know, pushing pushing the whole idea, and then she was Trump's educate. You know, it's it's very interesting and and i think you know i don't i don't believe in the whole um privatization of you know giving money to private schools i'm be, I'm, a, I'm a i'm a firm supporter strong supporter of public schools i'm a public school my kids are public school like that's all we went to um okay. and my daughter went to private school one year for for kindergarten and i pulled her out instantly because i said wait a minute now this is the thing what i did not like parents that receive scholarships we still had to fundraise they had yeah. us out here slinging flowers and popcorn, you know, coming to fish fries. Like, I know that's our way of giving back because our kids are receiving these. But I was just like, man, this is a lot, you know. So I pulled my daughter out. Plus, the school was closing. And now it's now um, Nelson Mandela. And so, mm. but mm. Um, I also feel that if you look at every school in North Omaha right now, they keep saying, oh, all these kids will get these scholarships. Every private school in North Omaha has a waiting list. Holy Name, Jesuit. Mandela. Uh, Nelson Mandela. So it's like, are the who who's benefiting from these? Because our kids are not benefiting from these mm. if, if if there's a waiting list for these schools. And then after they get, if they do get them, that 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 uh, voucher is not going to even be enough. They still have to come up with more money for that. It's no. not even covering the whole tuition. More fish fries. Yep, more, more fish more fries. Fish and, then, and then the fact is, you know, at any time these kids, they don't. I think Majid said it in there. They don't have to follow the guidelines like everybody else. So, so if this kid is not their model, they can send oh. that kid out with no with no reasons back to public school. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. have to give you a reason. And, it, and then I, if I'm not mistaken, the money doesn't go back with the kid. It stays. So mm -hmm. my thing is, you know, this this is this is where we'll start to see Charlie Kirk putting up schools in a strip mall. Mm. And we'll all these kickbacks um and again and, and i and, and let me just clarify this to say this there are some good people who are doing some good homeschooling um ladonna um don oh my gosh she's on the y'all know who i'm about to say um she used to be an ops school teacher um let me let me look let me look hold on while you looking uh in the chat, Mary Williams says uh, public schools have fundraising too. My kids always had a fundraiser. Uh, also, uh, Miss Erica Fell says same. Boogie did kindergarten and first grade, snatched him out. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary Williams says Brewer is far is far right on many issues, but I've seen him move left on many issues too. Uh, a shout out to Brewer on that. Mary Williams says the left should be pushing for every state to move away from winner takes all because it's less democratic. Yeah, all great comments. I appreciate that. I'm sorry that I don't get to all of them. Uh, Tony Johnson, the chat says, me, me, my family in public schools hitting me up daily for school fundraising and public school activities. Yeah, there's, there's going to be fundraising in, there, in all the all the places. Uh, Marianne Williams says, look, I think every everything Precious is saying is true, but every accusation made against private schools are true in public. public. Uh, yes. Um, and, and my, my, my thing, my thinking on that too, is that most of the kids are going to be in public school. Most of them. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not, I don't think that there shouldn't be an option of private school. I think that the issue is get the money from somewhere else. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem with, um, 
with private schools. I mean, if you if you can afford for your child to go to private school, that that means hey, that's what that's your choice. But don't take money from public school, public schools, and then give people tax breaks so they can flood money and and claim it's a it's a voucher when it's actually a tax break. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's just how it goes, you know. Um, let parent, you know, that's how I look at it. But I'm trying to think. Um, I, I feel so bad because I'm like literally losing. Um her yeah, name and she's a former principal and she does she does some work she's a former um principal and she's doing some homeschool work i know she does some work with leo and stuff so i i, I hmm. apologize i'm like drawing up i know it was ladonna um i'm really drawing a blank and i know she will kill me like precious but i apologize hmm. but yeah she's doing some great work because i did i spoke at one of her um to some of her students and um didn't know that they were all homeschooled and hmm. it was a really great conversation so yeah what what are what is that system like now as far as homeschooling? That's something we keep talking about. But like, what what resources are there for homeschoolers, or what is that? I don't know because I've never looked into homeschool. Um, mm. so I, I would I would I honestly I wouldn't know. Okay. Yeah, I'll ask my my sister at homeschools. Uh, so I, I'm gonna ask her about what's all involved. I know that uh, that her son goes to school once a week. Goes into uh, uh, I, I believe uh, OPS, uh, OPS school once a week. So there's some kind of program that's associated with it too that helps out or something. I'll have to get more information on that. Um, but yeah, that's an option we don't really talk about too much. But again, you know, I, I I feel like all of it could be we could be doing both. We we need the majority of the kids are going to be in public school. They need to we need to fix public schools. Mm-hmm. Point blank. Period. Also, though, some sometimes there's going to be kids, individuals that that are in the, these uh, public schools, and even if they are fixed, they're not. Gonna, they're just not going to work for them. They need to be somewhere else, getting uh, getting uh, another kind of education based on how it is they learn or whatever the deal is. And there there should be some money for that too. It just uh, it, it, the 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 only hang up is if you're going to take it from public schools. Now, in our in in this state, in with OPS. That's a hard thing to say, too, because I've heard the senators and I've heard other people say OPS has been turning down money and money that, that the senators has been trying to get them more money and they, they will turn it down. So do they need more money? Uh, we, we doing all this arguing about whether or not we're taking money out of public schools. But if they already act like they got enough or whatever the deal is and there's people that are trying to get them more and they turn it down, then that's an issue, too. So, yeah. what do you uh, so it's, it's very uh, nuanced. Like Buddy said earlier is our favorite word on this show. <laughs> nuanced situation. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, moving on from that, uh, it is 842 right now, if you believe in the concept of time. Uh, buddy, I think that you had a couple things on your mind that you wanted to uh, 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 make sure we got we got uh, heard from uh, Ms. McKesson on. Was I, am I mistaken on that? Um, well, just kind of one, uh, but uh, really quickly, LaDonna Griffin, is that yes. the name? You- LaDonna Griffin, yes. I saw, okay. yes, thank you, Kim. <laughs> I was looking, I, it was in, I thought it kept coming up, Tone, Tone style on my phone. Yes, LaDonna Griffin. <laughs> She's okay, doing some, okay. uh, and she is also running um, for the state board of education. Oh, okay. okay. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. Um, but really, the 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 big thing that I, I was we kind of alluded to on Monday, and you know, you and I talked about it before the show, Paul, as far as uh, this whole uh, immigration push and going to the national level, as far as uh, black people, just, just call it what it is. So, quote unquote, black people. You know, I'm hearing a lot of brothers and sisters uh, talking about, you know, not happy with Biden and, and talking about uh, leaning Republican. And uh, the Nebraska Examiner recently released an article uh, identifying immigration fears and just a lot of emotion and feelings around the the immigration um, and the level, the high number of immigrants coming into the United States. And, you know, where Democrats lean on that situation and, and quote unquote, black people saying, hey, I'm not happy about this. And there's some fears of, you know, jobs being taken and opportunities and people are chiming up about, you know, some of the perks and, and resources that immigrants are getting as they're coming into, you know, New York giving them hotels and things like that. Um, what So what, what say you on that? Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? What are your feelings about it? How do we get people, you know, to vote in their own interest? So I'm not hearing that on the ground here in Nebraska. Okay. So I'm, I'm not, I've not been approached to that, to have that conversation, having that conversation. Um, I do see the comments that are happening in New York, especially with um, when they were giving out the, um, was it the the card that had benefits on it for yeah, yeah. for the for the individuals coming here? Yeah. Um, I say all the time that, and this is my personal opinion: people have a right to come to this country. Um, they they want to they want to be here for a reason. Um, 
it's not my job to block people from wanting to do have a, um, a different part for their family, you know, a different life for their family. Um, and I support immigration 100 percent. Mm. Anthony mm. Rogers right in the chat. Immigrants pay taxes documented or otherwise. They are a critical yep. variable of our economy. Full stop. Very, mm. And, and I'm going to tell you that there was one situation that really hurt me a lot because I felt like in the state of Nebraska, many of our um, immigrant brothers and sisters do a lot of the work that many of us don't do working in our packing houses, working on the mm -hmm. farms. And so when I see people attack these people who come to this country for a better life, but they're doing all these jobs that that none of us most likely would ever. I know I know if someone put me out there, it, I would struggle. But I know my, I know this is what they do to be able to feed their family. I'm never going to block someone to be able to come to this country and be able to um, provide for their families. Never. And I think when they went up to, um, was it a tomato? I'm trying to think it was a few years ago when they did the um, the raid. And I think it was a tomato farm. Mm. And that hurt me. That hurt me because I'm like, these same people that are trying to persecute our immigrant brothers and sisters are the same people who's going to be eating tomatoes on their salads. Mm. It's interesting. Hear you. It's so, interesting. So you th that's something that I'll always fight for um because there's good people that come to this country. Every every person that crosses that border is not a bad person. And mm -hmm. so to try to lump them all in as as like they're bringing over this, they're doing there's people who want better for their for their families. And so we got to be able to help them the best way we can. I'm sorry because there's a lot of um a lot of people that look like us and a lot of people who got citizenship who ain't even working. Right. Who don't want to go get jobs? <laughs> uh, let's let's uh, let's move on from there. Eight forty six right now. If you believe in the concept of time, we appreciate everybody that's coming in and uh, and uh, having a lot of things they're saying here. Uh, we see the chat's kind of going off, and the yeah. chat has some strange things going on in the chat. One of them is uh, Rick Fulton. I'm gonna uh, ask you uh, that to to uh, not come on doing name calling. And, and I ain't if you don't know, to Rick Fulton. Rick Fulton. Oh, oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, let, me, let me, yeah, let me tell, let me, let me do my thing for the show here. We, if you had, you've been on long enough to know what our style is. So you, you come busting in with another subject. We're, we're speaking to Miss McKesson. That's not very respectful. I wish that you would keep your comments uh, and questions uh, towards her and uh, not come in calling senators' names and doing the, doing it like that again. So uh, I just want to remind you that that's not our style. So uh, please abide by that, uh, precious. Yeah, you want to add something to, to the yeah, add something to it because Rick Fulton. I'm looking for the screenshot. There was uh -oh. a comment. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think it was a comment under my daughter's story when she ran when she when they did a story for my daughter in the newspaper, and Rick Fulton made a comment underneath it, and it was disrespectful like disrespectful and i said i was going to wait because i couldn't comment on omaha world hero but i'm just gonna say this rick you one thing i say this about me it's a difference when you come for me because i signed up for this but when you come for my kid and you make a comment about oh are they gonna get shot and this and that when you were talking they were talking about the ops Basically talking about how many kids stayed in OPS. I got to find the comment. But I know you made the comment because it came up under your name. And you always making comments on Omaha World Herald. But I'm just going to say this. Don't ever come for nobody's kids. That's when you. That's when I let everything go. I don't care about my title. I don't care about my accolades. I don't care about nothing. What I do put up first and foremost is me being a mother. And me protecting my, my kid. And any kid that I've ever encountered. So kids and family are off limits. You go for the people, not for their kids, because they didn't sign up for that one. So yeah. I'm going to just say that. Keep it cute. Keep it classy, because the trust and believe. You'll never know when we'll come face to face, and I don't care where we're at. I will check you in public. Uh, and again, you've been on the show. You've been uh, checking our show out and commenting long enough to know what our style is here. And, and I, I want you to to think about that. You're going to have to stick to that because that's this. I don't I don't like what you came in talking about today at all. I don't care if you do think somebody's a jerk. It's not the kind of language we use here. It's not the kind of respect that we have for the black men that come on this show. 
Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you can you can disagree with somebody without disrespecting them. We're we're right. trying to push a different form of di- a discourse and conversation. Also, and, uh, also yeah. take our lead. I'm sorry to cut you off, buddy. Go no, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna, I was just gonna say. Also, re- remember that the, the style of the show here too is that you you follow our lead on this conversation. We're leading the conversation here. So you you come in all the time with with what you want to talk about, and, and you try to bombard the the, the chat. I want you to, to uh, remember that we use the chat to sp- as if we're speaking to each other directly and, and uh, do that with respect. If not, we do have the means to cut, cut people off here. We haven't had to do it yet. So I hope that we don't have to. But uh, that's the last time I'm going to ask you to, to follow our style on this show, though. There you go. There you go. And I'm it, sorry, it, just hurts, it just hurts when we have black men out here working hard, regardless if you agree with them or not. But Black men and black women are we get the we get the most disrespect when it comes to our work. We don't have to agree. We don't. But you wouldn't do that to another person. You wouldn't. Th- there's a lot of things that black women and black men take all the time that y'all wouldn't do to white women and, and white men. He might. Mm. He, 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 he might. He might. might. I don't know. You're right. You're right. You're right. 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 But it, right. it don't matter. You ain't gonna do it here. You get yeah. you get your own channel, your own show. Do it there. And uh, I want to move on from there. It's 8.50 oh, yeah. right now. I was about to say, I feel like we already spent enough time on that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but about 10 minutes left in the show. Uh, Precious, you got any final words for <sighs> us? Um, I just say I appreciate everybody's support. I know, like I say, you know, this work is not perfect. No one is perfect. Um, I feel that we got a lot, a lot to do. Um, I know I, I keep, I know I'm not supposed to look at the comments. I see Marlon asking me. Go ahead. It's a good question. It's a good question. <laughs> I see Marley asking me. He he did ask me about he did ask about Senator Chambers running. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will just say this. um, I have nothing but respect for Senator Chambers. Um, Senator Chambers is one of the people that I love dearly. Um, And Senator Chambers um, running for office. I'll be honest with you. I'm not happy with it because I feel that, um, you know, when you endorse um, a new up and coming leader and Senator what Senator McKinney has done um, has been very um, successful. And um, I'm, I'm rocking with Senator McKinney. Um, I got to tell me, I'm not saying that, and, and I'll say you could be any age and I will touch on Preston because I see everybody's asking me about Preston. I will touch mm-hmm. on Preston. Um, we have people who are of age who are like Biden, Preston, um, <laughs> Mr. Chambers, who are all seasoned elders and they have mm-hmm. been doing this work for many, many, many years. Man. Um, so I don't, I would never speak on somebody's age because number one, um, they come with a seasoned um, perspective. Uh, mm-hmm. they, they got more, more. They got forty plus years on life than me. So for mm-hmm. me to come in and tell them something is kind of like it's disrespectful. So I would never mm-hmm. do that. Um, as for as for John Ewing running, I'm excited that John Ewing is running. But again, that again that door is open for any Democrat to run for um, for mayor. I do just say be mindful because one thing if you're if you do want to get Gene out, <laughs> don't split your vote. <laughs> That's all I say. You yeah, know, you don't split your vote because you want to make sure that the the uh, most qualified and most well respected and the person who's going to actually um to govern on how you feel they should govern this city that's who you should be voting for so i leave that open um but definitely um excited for him to um step up and put his name in but we don't know who else may also do that um as well, for um preston love yeah well yeah one last question there. yeah so preston love um the national party support this is the thing we nebraska senate race um it's the way it goes. Like, for instance, Tony Vargas's race is a red to blue. So it's one of the top races that can be flipped. Um, as for the Senate race, I mean, they have all these other high profile Senate races that they are um, dedicated to. But just know that every time I'm in the room or Chair Club is in the room, we are talking about Preston's race. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what Preston is telling y'all. I'm not going to step on his toes because I don't, again, the conversations that y'all asking me, I don't know what's being said in the public because those conversations are not coming to me about not receiving national support. All I know is that we continue to support Preston, um, all the all the federal candidates campaigns as much as we can. And we also talk about it on a national level and we raise money to be able to, it's not for say, particularly for that campaign, but for the overall election. So you'll see a lot of stuff going out. We've sent out over 150,000 vote by mail application, 150,000 vote by mail applications. We got voter mm-hmm. guides going out to Sarpy Lancaster County. We have stuff going into um, Douglas County. There's a lot that's going on behind the scenes. Um, and just know that if that person is not 
receiving direct contributions, we are doing stuff as a party to making sure that these campaigns are receiving the resources they need to be successful and for people to get out and vote. So that is all I have, y'all. Um, mm -hmm. But I love my candidates. I do. I love all every single one. I may not agree with every single one. Um, and I always respect their um, their campaign and whatever they need. They can pick up the phone and call. Like, my phone is already ringing off the hook. Like, I need this. I need this. What is this? What is that? Um, and just working to make sure that overall that we win in 2024. That is, that is what my job is to do. So regardless if people love Democrats or don't, my job is to elect Democrats, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay. There you go. There you uh, go. One, one last thing, Prish, uh, 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 Brother Preston Love did say he felt supported by the local Democratic Party, not the national. So that's that was kind yeah, of yeah. We, we yeah we and and the thing is and and, and that come that comes into play. There's a lot of races that that don't get the same love, but we always make sure that we're talking about Preston. Um, if they say we, we got something going on, we're going to bring Preston with us. Um, you know, if, if we get an invite to, to a national engagement, they say you have so many tickets, trust and believe we're, we're going to put them in the room to be in the room where the people who are making decisions. And then we talk about those races and talk about what they have going on um, all the time. And so, um, you know, that's, yeah. It, it's, it's a lot of stuff behind the scenes, um, and I wish it was totally different. I wish that every race received the same, but I think when you look at the numbers, they just look at it where, okay, how does this look in Nebraska? And then also remember, y'all, we got to support Preston. He is he is running for only two years. He's running just to finish the last two years of um, Sass's um, term, and then mm. we need to turn around and look who's going to run in the for the next six years because I don't know if he's gonna I just know that he's committed to those two years so we mm. do have another election that's coming up in 26 for another six years so honestly who are we grooming to be able to mm. do that part after so yeah. I mean we have it's a lot it's a hot it's it's a a so we have to um yeah we gotta we'll, we'll, and, we'll bring you back on the show and, and talk more about it for yeah, sure we definitely have to do this yeah. soon and I just want to say on the press and love situation He's going against Ricketts. Ricketts ain't it, y'all. So <laughs> y'all know how to be Ricketts. What you gonna do? Precious, always a pleasure. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and spending your time this morning with us. I appreciate uh, it. And, and and every time you come on, I'm like, why are we why are we only have her on every once in a while? Oh she yeah, is, we got so yeah, much more. Well, about. now that I'm an empty nester, um, <laughs> <laughs> I have time. But also, before I go, can I just give a shout out to my Bray Bray? I know he's only four, but if y'all follow me on Facebook, y'all know that this baby was born during COVID, and he is my heart. Um, I'm not a grandma; I'm a TT. Okay. <laughs> Today, my baby turns four years old, and this okay. morning when he woke up before he left, I was like, "How old are you?" He's like six. I was like, "Boy, you are not six; you're four. So if y'all mm. know. Spider Man Bray Bray, money flashing Bray Bray, who like to flash the money on Facebook. Please I've send him a good shout out because he is four years old today. And um, if I, anything I do in this world, there's three black men, well, four black men that I'm always going to protect. And that's my brother, that's my nephews, Andre and Jamal, and that's my Bray Bray. So just know I'm fighting every day for those four black men to have a place and be safe at all times. So just give my baby a shout out, okay? Love there it. Love it. There you go. Get Thank love so in the much. chat. Keep going. Right, bye, y'all. Hey, precious, precious. Wait, wait. Are, are you the artist back there for this mural? Is no. Okay. I don't know. I, don't know. I, thought, I thought you might be painting on the side that we didn't know about. Look here. I was like, I was about to probably about to big you up. I was like, you the talent artist? I got is um shopping. But no. So let me just show y'all real quick. I can just give y'all a quick tour. So this is from Danny Reyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, Danny he's Reyes. dope. He's dope. Shout out to Danny. Yeah. Yeah, he's real dope. We got, oh, let me see. We got our Frank Lemire quote on here. Protecting right. Blue Dot. We got protecting our unions. Um, we got our Kool-Aid stuff. So, yes, yeah, so Danny Ray, a shout out to him who wow. did this mural for us. Um, he came in and did it in a week. And so, yeah, he's dope. He's dope. Shout Very out to dude. Dude. He shout got, out I said he got a uh, Biden looking like Poppy over there, but that's okay. <laughs> He need, he need a couple more wrinkles though. He need to put on a couple more wrinkles on him, but he be all right. He got a tan. <laughs> he got a little tan. That's right. Daddy Reyes did it. So you got to put a tan on. Him a yeah, bit. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Presents, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming in. I love we'll y'all. Have you. a good day. Love y'all too. Love you too. Peace, See you peace later. Peace, peace, peace. Eight fifty nine right now. If you believe in the concept Man. of time, it's already over right with. Right, right up, up to, to it. it.
Uh, buddy, uh, you, you you think you do a one minute lightning round? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a few things. Uh, just just hanging out. Actually, there's a couple of haps a little bit. Little things happening okay. this month. Uh, coming up to remind you all of. Uh, again, uh, reminding people April fifteenth. Five more days is coming up. April fifteenth is the tax deadline. If you have not filed your taxes, uh, again, there's a pilot program from the IRS that you can file directly. Uh, with the IRS rather than going through like an H and R block or or whoever you might file through. Uh, and this is free. Uh, it's a directfile.irs.gov. Again, that's directfile.irs.gov. But again, that is federal. So you still have to go through whomever you go through to file your state taxes. Uh, but just, just reminding people, you have five more days to file your taxes if you have not done so. April 15th is that deadline. So look out for that. I'm going to just jump in this right here and say, if you got, if you haven't done it by now, you got five days. Just go on and call and ask for an extension at this point. There you go. There you go. Get it uh, right. Also, we'll be trying to rush a new program. Man, come on, man. You stepping on my minute. Uh, also, you got two more opportunities for the Omaha Land Bank. Uh, again, there, there was a, they're looking for community input. They're changing their policies and procedures and with the community to help them do so. Uh, as Paul tells it, they are uh, seeming very receptive in listening to the people. Again, tomorrow will be another opportunity. If you miss uh, the Saturday, April 6th event, you have tomorrow, April 11 at 530 at the Malcolm X Memorial Foundation. That's 3448 Evans Street, right up the hill from Time Out Chicken. Uh, also, you have a uh, on Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. That's from 10 to 12. There's another opportunity. Uh, again, you do have to register. Go to omahalandbank.org forward slash CIP. Again, that's omahalandbank.org forward slash CIP to register. This is a perfect opportunity to hear about and help uh, allevi- or help make it easier to purchase land from the land bank. Definitely, definitely, definitely step up on this uh, also speaking of stepping up my brother's keeper omaha program manager from the uh, empowerment network again african african american empowerment network that's a 60 to 70 thousand dollar a year job comes with benefits uh, again this is the opportunity especially those of you who are not happy with what you're seeing from the empowerment network this is the opportunity to build relationships uh, build coalition and be the change that you would like to see and get some get some change in the process so Again, check it out. Uh, it is on Indeed. Maybe we can post a link in the chat uh, for all of you if you're interested. Again, that's my brother's keeper, Omaha program manager through the Empowerment Network. Sixty to seventy thousand a year, y'all. Check it out. And then, last but not least, uh, April twelfth. April twelfth uh, coming up. I believe that's Friday. Omaha event recognizes Second Chance Month. Uh, offers resources for former inmates. Again, we are working. Uh, with the reentry program uh, at um, at Metro and learning a, a lot about recidivism efforts, learning a lot about what's going on with our incarcerated brothers and sisters and the resources that are or aren't available for them. And this is a big thing. This is hosted by Reconnect Inc. Uh, the seventh annual community resource fail, fair is to be held from 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the former Center Mall. That's 1941 South 42nd Street on the second floor. Again, that's uh, from 10 to 2 at the Center Mall, 1941 South 42nd Street on the second floor uh, on April 12th. Uh, this is uh, something good, especially if uh, those of you who have family members or even if you're, you yourself are formerly incarcerated, a perfect opportunity to get some much needed resources. Uh, so there you go. There you go. That does it for our lightning round. Okay. Not quite a minute. A little over, but close. That's close. Out. Close. Oh, don't blame it on me. He was already going to go past me. <laughs> And act like you were. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully, you know, some good information for the people. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, shout out to everybody who's allowing us to go past the, the nine o'clock hour here, uh, just to, just for us to wrap the show up today. But thank you so much for joining us on this show. I see a lot of people in there. I've, I've missed some names and missed some uh, some uh, people that are coming into the chat with their their comments. Please go back and check it out uh, in, in its entirety on Facebook and YouTube. Check out all the comments when you do. Really appreciate that very much. So uh, please, please check it out. Tamika Renee is giving us a little information about taxes. If you're expecting a refund, no need to file an extension. You have until October 15th to e-file. I would definitely check out, double check on that. <laughs> not, not, not saying not saying you don't know what you're talking about. I I, I will take your word, but I also think, um, I, you know, just be careful with it. That's all I'm saying. Gotta be and I'm check. sensitive about it right now because I owe the IRS a whole bunch of money. Got to deal with this mess in a big way. Yeah. So and a lot of it's because of some stuff I missed and all that. So I'm just saying, just do your due diligence. And uh, it's a big conversation that we need to have at one day. You know, one day when we when we come back around to the follow your money 
uh, talk about talk. We need to talk about that taxes and insurance and all the things that uh, help build wealth and help uh, help you keep your money. It's not just about Man. making money; it's about keeping it. That part. So yeah, appreciate everybody that's uh, that's joined us this morning. I see Brooke is giving us a good morning. Brooke, this is probably the latest that you've come in after the show now. <laughs> that's the latest I've seen you come in. We were talking about property taxes. We've been talking about homeschooling, all your subjects. So you have to go back and watch the show. So appreciate you coming in saying hi, though. Uh, most deaf, she says, always fact check. This info is on irs.gov. Get familiar go. with it. Get there familiar with it. But you got some words for the people? Yeah, man. Uh, man, always a pleasure speaking with uh, Sister P, uh, history making precious McKesson. We appreciate you. Uh, we love you. We thank you for taking the time to come and speak with us, especially out of your busy schedule. It is election season, so I understand. Uh, but looking forward to having you back very soon. Also, big, big shout out. The chat went off, man. The chat went off in a real way. Uh, big shout out to all the people commenting. We didn't get to get to all the chats, uh, but still, we appreciate you letting your mind be free. And your voice be heard a few new names we haven't seen a few names we haven't seen in a while uh so again come back soon come check us out let's have this conversation again catch us monday wednesday and friday right here on first guy omaha in the morning in the meantime between time paul b yep yep take it away man man shout out to some new chat chimer names and some people that are coming on in i see heather williams i didn't get a chance to talk about your comment anna hernandez as well good morning to you c larkin a lot of people in the chat that we don't normally hear from all the time. I'm, uh, like like Buddy said, welcome back to the chat. Welcome back mm-hmm. to the show. Thank you so much. Heather Williams says, good show this morning. Appreciate it very Thank much. You. Ms. Erica Fell says, wonderful show. So much info with needed laughs as well. Everyone, please be good to yourselves. Drink water and step with purpose. Hey. Love that very much. Shout out to Precious McKesson, history making P, the yeah. elector. Uh, it's always a pleasure talking to her and like Anthony Rogers Wright says when she starts when she starts a sentence with let me tell you something not, 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 let me tell you something you're about to be fired and don't let her don't let her say baby and hey. then you, you're about to really get it then hey, she, that's, that's, the, that's the one for me that's the one for me <laughs> Brooke said excuse me but I've been here anyway. <laughs> okay <laughs> Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate everybody that's joining us today. I want to give thanks to the Umaha tribe elders for allowing us to be on this land and speak while we're here. Shout out to our elders for allowing us to speak before you and shout out to you, the chat chimers, allowing us to speak with you. Again, I apologize for not being able to get to everybody's chat today, but if you miss any parts of the show, go back and check it out on Facebook and YouTube and check out the chats. Lots of really great comments, information, all kinds of good stuff that are in uh for real for real so appreciate appreciate everybody's participation some of you guys man stay here from the from the beginning to the end man from the rooter to the tutor rooter to the tutor that's Thank what you. i'm talking about appreciate yeah. you yeah appreciate you very much we'll see you on friday uh we're working on another special guest there as well but also we'll have an extensive haps like we say every time we'll, we'll try to have an extensive haps <laughs> that part that part yeah yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, I see. I see, brother Anthony uh, E. Cream, E. Cream, brother, can do this now. There you go. There you go. Uh, Rick Fulton's still going on, so we're gonna go ahead and close the show out. Uh, maybe, maybe not getting the memo. I don't know. Maybe just coming on right and not listening to the show. Actually, not not sure. That's uh, possible. Yeah, but we'll handle possible. it. We'll handle it. I uh, appreciate everybody that's coming on through. We'll see you uh, Friday. And in the meantime, you got haps and things that are going on. Please keep on populating Friends of First Guy Omaha, the group page. I really appreciate everybody that does that. It really informs us about what direction we need to go in speaking with you on these subjects uh, when you do that. So thank you very much for everybody who's participating in that. And uh, and please keep doing so. And we'll see you Friday. Peace. Peace. By the way, Van The red, 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 the black, black, and the green. At the crossroad, with the key, by any means necessary.